from University Stadium on the campus of the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, New Mexico. ProView Sports and the Mountain West Network proudly present college football tonight. The Lobos of New Mexico and the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. Good evening, wherever you're joining us. Welcome to University Stadium. Jeff Sambietta along with former Lobo great George Carter. Glad you could be with us for the home opener for the University of New Mexico. Both these teams 0-1, lost on the road last week. George, for UNM, this is a big day. You've gone through it. You, you've been a player. You've gone through camp. You've got hit. You sweated. You got yelled at. Lobos are on a 10-game losing streak. They haven't won in almost a calendar year. I think more than anything, just to validate everything, they need to know what it feels like to win. They do, and they're going to need to establish success early and often. If they get up on a couple touchdowns, if they get behind, it could be one of those moments where, oh, not again, right? But this football team is going to have to learn how to win, and tonight, let's hope it starts. 27 newcomers on offense alone, a new offensive coordinator, a transfer, graduate transfer quarterback. You would think coming off a 52-10 loss, people would be concerned about the offense, but the Lobo coaches feel really good about what they saw last week at Texas A&M on the offensive side. Yeah, there were some moments where we felt like, oh, man, this is a big-time college football program here, right? I mean, just with the way that Dylan Hopkins commands that offense, the way he gets the ball out of, a hand, out of his hands, it's pretty impressive, and you can tell he's played a lot of football. All right, on your side of the ball, defensively, the coaches said the defensive line has played as well as they have since this coaching staff has been there. They gave up 52 points. Got to get better in the secondary, but the coaches like what they saw yeah I mean that was a that was a top tier offensive line uh, from Texas A&M last week and defensively those big fellas up front were able to hold you didn't see them right. getting blown back off the ball now they were getting moved out of the way right to open up some holes for those Texas A&M running backs but they weren't getting blown off the ball and there was a pretty good battle down there so looking forward to watching that battle in the trenches tonight what about Tennessee Tech they come in here lost last week on the road at Furman, the six-ranked team in FCS, six turnovers by the Golden Eagles last week was a real problem for them. Liberals got to realize this is a team with plenty of talent, and if they mess around, Tennessee Tech's got enough talent to come in here and beat you. Yeah, and I mean, I can guarantee you their receivers are probably licking their chops Promise. after what they watched last week on film against Texas A&M, right? And Tennessee Tech is going to try to spread you out, four or five receivers on every down. They're going to move people all over the place. So defensively, in the secondary particularly, they're going to have to keep their eyes clean. Should be a fun one. It's the home opener in Albuquerque. It is the Lobos. It's the Golden Eagles. Kickoff is next. Glad you're with us here in Albuquerque. Oh, that diabolical snooze button. Sure, it seems innocent enough. But if you're not careful, you could be trading a full day of possibilities for nine minutes of pillow purgatory. Because inspiration only shows up when you do. Know anyone like that? You know, you don't have to do this. It is on my bucket list. So is the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And I just got tickets. Yep, let's definitely do that one first. Come on, let's go. Get to the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, October 7th through the 15th for hot air balloons, entertainment, food, and more. The Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Put it at the top of your list. a warm evening about 94 degrees at last check it's gonna be hot but it's a, as, as the boys from tennessee told me it's a dry heat they said, <laughs> they, they said it feels cool it's it's a lot nicer jeff sabietta george carter lobos will receive tennessee tech won the co the toss they deferred to the second half so first meeting ever between the lobos and the golden eagles on the football field lobos have won their last eight against fcs opponents and it's been a long time since the Golden Eagles have beaten an FBS opponent. Last time was in 1980. They have lost 36 in a row to FBS opponents. September of 1980, they beat Western Carolina 26 to 10. So, George, you're looking at it in your New Mexico, and you're saying, all right, last week we had Texas A&M on the road, ranked team 100,000 people. Next week, the Aggies of New Mexico State are coming in. There's no way you look past this one, right? You're not good enough to look past anyone. Yeah, there's no way, man. I mean, the, the, just the, the talent level and this, this team just needs some success. They need some wins. And, you know, as we talked about yesterday on the radio show, 
regardless of who's blinding up in front of you, you come to dominate every single day, and that's the mindset that this Lobo football team is bringing into this football game. Sherrod White and Luke Weissong are back to receive for New Mexico. The kicker for the Golden Eagles will be Hayden Olson. Lobos start off on offense like Danny Gonzalez, their head coach, likes to. He's one of the few coaches in America who, when he wins the toss, does not defer. Now, this was not that case. Tennessee Tech won, but they did defer. But he likes the ball first. He likes the ball first, want to move that thing and just let everybody know what this offense is all about this year. Now he's going to get it first. We are underway. The home season for the Lobos is underway. That is Luke Weissong taking it out of the end zone. He was a yard deep and he's going to get out to the 13 yard line Lobos will start there deep in their own territory it is their fifth year senior transfer quarterback Dylan Hopkins the transfer from UAB who was 15 for 24 last week 115 yards he'll lead them out George I expect in talking to the offensive staff yesterday probably 50-50 mix I think they're going to want to run they're going to want to throw he wants to be pretty balanced Yeah, and I think we'll see this UNM offense really work to establish the run early in the game. That is their culture. That is the identity that Coach Gonzalez and Coach Vincent want to build on the offensive side of the football. Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt, they call him Bill. He is the lone running back off the left hip of Hopkins. Inside handoff. Wysong has it. It's going to be a pass play in the stats. Goes for a yard on a little shovel pass as they try the jet sweep on the first play. Yeah, and the Lobos are going to really try to get Wysong worked into the offense early this week. He didn't get that many touches last week, and he's one of the most dynamic football players on the offensive side of the ball for this Lobo offense. So expect to see him get lots of touches tonight in lots of different ways. They're calling it one yard. It'll be second down and about nine. Krosky Merritt, the running back. Hopkins throws or looks to throw. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, and he's going to keep it and run out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Get him about three. It'll set up third and long for New Mexico. And just on that, that first drop back, you can see the patience that Hopkins operates with in this offense. He's been in this offense for four years now, so he understands it. He doesn't make bad decisions with the football, and that is going to be a really positive uh, aspect of this offense for the Lobos this year. Lobos need the 23-yard line. First third down of the day for the Lobos last week. They were 3 of 13, just 23% on third down in College Station. They'll send a wide receiver far to the right, a wide receiver far to the left. That's Wysong now in motion. Hopkins to throw, has time, and it is complete. Andrew Erickson with the catch across the 25-yard line. And out to the 26, a first down for New Mexico, and the first pass attempt for Dylan Hopkins is complete. And it feels like and- Andrew Erickson has been here forever. It's because he has. I mean, this has got to be this guy's fifth, sixth year of football, but he continues to make plays, always shows up when you need him to. So a new set of down for New Mexico. Corey Krosky Merritt right behind Hopkins gets his first hand of the day and finds some room out to the 30-yard line. About the 29, give him three yards. On first down for a young man they call Bill. Why Bill? Well, when he was a young man, he had a bald head. And his friend said it reminded him of Little Bill, the cartoon <laughs> character. He likes it. And everybody I talked to, they never can call him Ja'Cory. They just call him Bill. The coach said Bill. we're going to give the ball to Bill. There go Bill. And he is Bill. Of all the nicknames you hear, right? Bill. And it stuck. Third down. It's Bill again. Cuts back and he is hit. Just as he crosses the line of scrimmage, bounces off the initial hit. Coming up was Tim Kutris for the Golden Eagles on the initial stop. Bill bounces off to about the 34, and it'll set up second, or third down and short for the Lobos. And the thing you got to love about Bill, right, is that he is a the perfect blend of power, balance, and speed when it comes to a running back. He's incredibly patient, as you could see there. He, he, he's got a little shift to him now, and so – Big running backs like that normally aren't as shifty, but he's got a little shift to him, but he'll also put his shoulder down and run you over if he needs to. So third down and two for the Lobos, and we got a whistle, and a timeout is called by New Mexico. Timeout. New Mexico, their first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout in length. It'll be a short one. This one thing Danny Gonzalez said, you know, I don't want to do it, but especially in the second half, he burned timeouts early last week against Texas A&M as well. 
you don't normally see it three minutes in on your first drive, but obviously they saw something they didn't like. Yeah, and we don't know if it's a communication error or what it may be, but you got to keep those timeouts. I mean, particularly in the second half, those things are gold. And so, again, it may look like there's some communication issues going on between getting the plays in, getting the plays out on time. That's something that this Lobo offense is going to have to clean up. So it's going to be third down and two. Lobos need to get across to the 36-yard line. Bill is the running back off the left side. They give it to Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt. He fights his way for the first down and will get it. Rickard on the tackle for the Golden Eagles, but about a four-yard gain and a first down for New Mexico. They're two of two. Daniel Rickard, the sophomore from Nolansville High School in Tennessee, made the tackle. Yeah, and you're going to really want to see this offensive line from UNM tonight establish and impose their will upon this Tennessee Tech defensive front. They're going to try to move these guys off the ball. You didn't see that much last week against Texas A&M, but tonight that is going to be a goal, moving the line of scrimmage closer to those sticks. Throws it to the near side, and it is caught. That is Davis, Ryan Davis, the transfer from UAB, who came over with the quarterback Hopkins, the offensive coordinator Brian Vincent, First catch of the night for Ryan Davis. They really like the young man they call R.D. Yeah, they really like Davis, and unfortunately he's limping off the field. But he has that, 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 that cadence with Dylan Hopkins. They've also played together for quite some time. He knows how they, how, how they know how each other works. And so that's a great relationship that hopefully we get to see mature over the season with this Lobo football team. Second down and five. The running back is Dorian Lewis. They give it to Erickson on the jet sweep. Erickson across the 50. He's got a first down and his gang tackled there. Bunch of guys were there to meet him. Kutris was in on it. Jackson Price, the safety, was the first guy there for the Golden Eagles. Out on his own. Gets a block from you. And you love seeing the wide receivers block, don't you? Got to, man. Yep. That was Caleb Medford, who was out in front wearing number four. So first down for the Lobos. Clock ticking on their first drive. Everything probably Brian Vincent wants it to be right now, huh? Indeed. Very methodical drive thus far. Lewis again, the setback. He takes his first carry and is brought down. Nice play. Coming up from the linebacker position is Aaron Swafford. He led them, the Golden Eagles, in tackles last week with 12 and was able to shoot through and Stop that play for no gain. Yeah, and on the flip side, you're going to want to see Tennessee Tech work to slow down this run. They generally have four down D linemen. They've got a lot of speed on the outside. Their linebackers can run sideline to sideline. And so it's going to be interesting tonight to see what the Lobos decide to do. Do they continue to stay in between the tackles, or do they continue to try to work the edges to get the football outside and get away from some of the speed? Connor Whitoff was the Lobo who you saw limping off one of their tight ends. Chakrosky Merritt with a big hole up the middle. chakori has got some room. Bill to the 10. Touchdown, New Mexico. That kid is talented. Wow. 48 yards on second down. Lobo strike first. Chakori Krosky Merritt. Call him Bill. Call it a touchdown. And, Jeff, just like we talked about, that O-line is going to have to cause, create some separation and move that line of scrimmage, and there they did. It looked like the defensive line from Tennessee Tech was five yards off the football, and then you've got Bill making those moves out in the open. He's got enough speed to get it to the end zone. Touchdown, Lobos. Luke Driz Whiskey comes on for the extra point. 48 yards for Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt. The extra point is on the way, and it is good. 9-12 to go, first quarter in Albuquerque. The Lobos lead Tennessee Tech 7-0. Timeout on the field. Came back in my college years, we'd stop in for a case of beers, a couple of burritos and some gas. With that all sets freedom. Let's find out. Keep it wild, Forerunner. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. First, it took them 
five, I'm doing the math backwards, five minutes and 48 <laughs> seconds to go 83 yards. A big drive capped off by Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick's 48-yard touchdown run right up the gut, and then he ran away from everyone. Bill is quick. And Lobos lead 7-0, and Luke Drizwicki will put his foot into the ball and drive it into the end zone for a touchback. And the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech will have their first possession. Ethan Roberts will be their quarterback. He got his first start for the Golden Eagles last week. It was a tough one for them and for him at Furman. Furman is the sixth-ranked team in FCS, and it was a tough day on the road for them. They lose 48-10. to Three interceptions for Roberts, and he's going to try to get this offense on track. Comes out with one setback. Chavian Allen is the guy off his left hip. Roberts puts one guy in motion. Hands it off up the middle. That's a big, big hole for number three, Javian Allen. It looked like a gain of about eight yards for Allen. Coming up with Zach Morris to make the tackle for New Mexico. Yeah, and this is going to be a big series for this Lobo defensive front now. The front seven particularly, they're going to have to really do some things up front tonight, get some pressure on Roberts in order to help take some of the pressure and the load off of the secondary in this Lobo defense. So a nice gain on first. They call it seven. Empty backfield now for Ethan Roberts. Drops back to throw, flips it over to the right side, and is incomplete. Nice play by Jamarius Lewis coming up to knock it away from the tight end, Barnhart. Lewis closed quickly. You know, the Lobo DBs, talking to the coaches this week, George, yeah, they gave up a lot of points last week, but the coaches feel that they were in position. It's a lot of technique. They, the coaches, a bunch of them said, we didn't get out-athleted by Texas A&M. They felt they're really close. Allen's the running back. It's third down and three. Pitch to Allen on the left side. Breaks one tackle. Gets a first down and gets forced out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Gain of eight and a first down for the Golden Eagles. Give them the 39 and call it seven. Yeah, and we don't talk about this enough, but this Lobo defense lost 10 starters last year, right? Whether it was guys finishing up their eligibility, guys who have left in the transfer portal. So you lost a lot of people who played a lot of snaps last year, and this is almost a completely new Lobo defense in a lot of aspects. Well, I, I think there's a lot of conversation in regards to that, and certainly without Rocky Long here, right. it makes a difference, right. right? Troy Reference taken over, and he's done a terrific job, and he's a good coach. It's Allen up the middle. Greeted and he drags the pile. First guy to greet him was Ray Leotele, and then it was a bunch of red shirts, but it's a gain of five out to the 44 yard line. It'll be second down and five. Troy Refford takes over as the, as the defensive coordinator. You know, there, there's part of me that has thought, well, I, I've watched this defense because Danny Gonzalez is really, that, I mean, that's his thing. He's yep. a defensive guy. I've watched defense for years. I, I believe it's going to work, but you're right. It's not all about the X's and O's, right? It's about the Jimmys and the Joes, and guys got to play. You lose 10 starters, there's going to be a learning curve. Roberts to throw, goes deep left side and overthrows his intended receiver. Out on the outside was number seven, Metrius Fleming. It'll be second down and four. Yeah, and it's been interesting to see Tennessee Tech come out uh, with these first couple of plays. What they were anticipating is spreading, spreading out this Lobo defense, really moving the football down the field, trying to confuse them with lots of different motions. But they've run the ball three out of their first four plays. Offsides, number 16, defense in the neutral zone to snap. Five-yard penalty, the result, first down. Now that's Dimitri Johnson, a tough penalty for a linebacker to get all the way up there and be offsides. Gives him a first down, so it's the second first down on the drive. This one, courtesy of a penalty, and it keeps the drive alive. That's the kind of stuff that'll, instead of being third down and four, you, you just hand him a first down. Balls at the 49, first play for the Golden Eagles in Lobo territory. Roberts hands it off. Gain of a about three. That is Justin Pagis. Justin Pagis is the other running back. He'll wear number zero. So second down and seven. And right now, 
they look pretty good offensively. They do, and they, they're, they're, they're challenging this Lobo front seven, right? And that, that was the thing that we thought was going to really be the big battle tonight, the game within the game, watching the front seven of this Lobo offense go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Tennessee Tech offensive line. Flips it out to the near side. It is complete. It's going to be short of the first down. That is Allen out of the backfield on the reception. JV and Allen. And they like to throw to that young man. That's their playmaker, 5'7", junior out of Freeport, New York. He had 37 yards rushing last week, but they do like to throw him the football. Need to get just between the 39 and 40. Throw to the near side. What a catch up there. Terrific catch by number nine. That is Brad Clark, who just went up and high-pointed it with one hand. What a catch. Yeah, and Brad Clark was their lead receiver last Offsides, year. Offsides, number 45 defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is first down. Yeah, and Brad, Car Black Brad Clark last week had six receptions for 73 yards for this, uh, this Golden Eagles offense. And so he is a target, one of the main targets for Roberts to get out on the outside. So a first down for the Golden Eagles. We're marching down the field, 29-yard line. 7 nothing New Mexico. Lobos took the opening drive, went 83 yards. Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt topped it all off with a touchdown run of 48 yards. And we got a timeout, timeout called Tennessee Tech. Their first timeout of the half. Timeout on the field. That's Cal McNeil. He is your referee. We'll be right back. It'll be first and 10. Lobos lead the Golden Eagles 7 nothing here in Albuquerque. You want to feel important. You want to be a part of something bigger, something that matters and can help change things. You want to feel Out at the 17. Now they go f five wide, three right, two left for Roberts. Rolls to the right side. Pressure going deep into the end zone and overthrows his intended receiver. He was looking for Brad Clark. Good coverage there. And it'll be second down as they tried a little deception. And this is exactly what the local coaches said. They're going to do a lot of motion, a lot of different formations. They're going to try to catch you sleeping, and the Lobos played that well defensively. They did, and good to see Bryce Santana back there, uh, back up on the front line playing defensive nose tackle for this Lobo team, and he is somewhat of a game wrecker. Plays with a high motor. Good to see him back in the lineup this week. Aaron Smith with good coverage on that play, so it's second down and 10. Allen back in behind now on the left hip of the quarterback, Ethan Roberts. Fake the inside handoff. They're looking at Allen on the wheel route, and he makes a terrific catch at the three-yard line. It is going to be complete. Sire Riley had him in coverage, and there was a flag on the play. They may get Sire for pass interference, but a terrific catch by J.B. and Allen. Yeah, and in the first few plays of this game for Tennessee Tech, you could see how dynamic of a player J uh, and Allen is. And if the Lobos don't get their hands on him early, he could cause some problems for them as this game wears on. And he's causing problems on this first drive. First down and goal. The ruling on the field is a completed catch for a first down. That play is under further review. All right, so they're going to come back and look at this, and we'll give them the looks that we've got. It looked like a terrific catch as I watched that thing live. We'll stay here as they look at it. A little surprise the way the Golden Eagles have marched down the field like this on the first drive? Yeah, I mean, I, I am. But we also knew that this could happen, and this has been a very balanced drive. And they've, they've got this Lobo defense back on their heels a bit right now. They're not really too sure what's coming. And uh, from the offensive side of the ball with Tennessee Tech, they're doing a really nice job of mixing things up. Run, pass, mixing things up, keeping this Lobo defense on its heels. 67-yard drive so far. They've got a couple more to try to finish this thing off. And they've been doing it both with the run and the pass. Take a look at the play that's in question here. Good coverage by Riley, although they called him for it. It looks like that, well, we don't see the backside of it, do we? No, don't, not, not seeing that far in. So there's not necessarily enough evidence to, to potentially overturn this. Yeah, I think what you they're can't looking see if he at, controls it all the way down to yeah, the ground. It looked like, and this thing just dropped out of the sky. Maybe this will be a better look. Good adjustment on the ball. Yeah, you just can't see if, if that can't thing see. came out, can you? Yeah, and you got to remember that he's got, he's got to keep uh, control of that football all the way through the ground. And so there, there's a referee standing right there in front of that as he rolls over, and he's got a pretty good look into what's going on there. Ruling on the field of a completed pass stands. 
First down, Tennessee Tech. So Allen's Clock will start on my ready. Allen's having himself a day. He's got two passes for 18 yards. He's carried the ball four times for 25 yards. And they got him knocking on the door of the Lobo end zone. First down and goal at the two. Lobos lead seven and nothing, but that's in a little bit of danger here. Ethan Roberts, quarterback. Allen is your running back off his right hip. Got to believe they're going to feed him, right? And they do. He gets stopped. It was Marenko, the first guy to get him low. A gain of about a yard. Looks like he's going to get, well, maybe not. Just inside the two-yard line, maybe a half yard. Marenko was the first guy there. Second down and goal. Good test for Lobo defense, right? Great test for the Lobo defense. I mean, you, what we haven't really seen uh, against this Lobo defense are sustained drives, and that's what this has been. It's generally been the big play, but they've been able to sustain this drive all the way through. Roberts goes into the end zone, but they blew that thing dead. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 88, offense. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. It's Hunter Barnhart, the tight end. And that's the guy they threw the ball to. So he was a little anxious to get down the field because maybe, <laughs> hey, they're, they're throwing it to me. They Moving my a little number. too fast, big fella. Yeah. So five-yard penalty. Backs it up just outside the six. A second down and goal. Roberts by himself in the backfield. Bunch formation to the right. Looking left. Over the middle and knocked away. Terrific play. To knock that ball away by Ray Leotele. Double coverage is what Roberts threw into, and then Leotele knocked it away. Yeah, also good to see Ray out there. He is probably one of the most extinct, instinctual football players I've ever seen. He always just seems to be around the football, splitting his time with Marenko uh, this year. But he is a ball player now, someone to watch out for for this Lobo defense. All right, so big play for both sides. 2.23 to go first quarter. 7 nothing for the Lobos. Roberts pressured, throws, touchdown, Tennessee Tech. Demetrius Fleming on the other end of a six-yard touchdown pass from Ethan Roberts, and we are a point after away from being even. And what a job by Roberts there. Lobos brought three linebackers. All those guys were coming. He just hang, hung in the pocket and was able to deliver a bullet. And there you go, seven points. Terrific throw and catch. Fleming. Found a way to get open in the back of the end zone. And we're a point after away. Hayden Olson, who has, by the way, made 67 straight point after touchdowns. It would be 68, but there's a flag down. So let's see what that's all about. Flag down on the near side. Could be another offsides on this level of defense. Offsides, that's number 1-8 defense. That penalty is declined. That point is good. That's three already, isn't it? It is. Not too sure what's going on there, partner. Timeout on the field. They'll go to clean it up, and we'll come back. 2.17 to go, first quarter. We got a game. Lobos and Tennessee Tech tied at 7. Gave up 52 points last week. Yeah, and I mean, th that, that is going to be a theme that we're going to need to watch throughout this entire game, but also really throughout the entire season. You lose that many guys on the defensive side of the football, that's going to impact you. And although you've got some guys who have played. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down, New Mexico. That's a break for the Lobos. Go ahead, finish. Big time. And you've got to create a level of cohesion, right? I mean, these guys haven't played a lot of football together as a unit, so that is also going to take some time. And now you've got a new play caller as well in Coach Gonzalez, who's actually calling in the defensive plays, but you're, the defense is being coordinated by Troy Reffitt. And so there's a lot of new pieces and a lot of new moving parts on this UNM defense uh, that we've got to look out for. Might we be in for a shootout tonight? We could be. Very easily. I know that's not what the Lobos were looking for. I mean, they, they expected to put some numbers up, but Tennessee Tech certainly looked good on their first drive, marching straight down the field, aided by some penalties, certainly. Indeed. All right, so Lobos have it with 2.17 to go. Dylan Hopkins is the quarterback. Bill, Ja'Cory Krosky, Merritt. Lone setback. 
Hopkins flips it out to Bill on the near side. And he's got a little bit of room across the 40 and down to the 42-yard line where he will gain about seven yards on that. Driven out of bounds there on a nice play by Tennessee Tech's number 42. That is Terrence Dedman. And you bring up good part, uh, a good point about the penalties, partner. Last Oof. week, this Lobo football team, 10, 10 penalties, 114 yards. So that's going to have an impact, and that's an area of their game they need to clean up significantly if they hope to have the success that they want this season. Flip to the near side. That is Washington, who is met immediately in a terrific play there on the defensive side by Okachi Imanwari, he was there immediately on the first catch for D.J. Washington, the highly sought after and highly touted junior college receiver. Yeah, and right now this Tennessee Tech, Tennessee Tech team is playing with a bit of moxie, right? They're coming out here. They're gaining a little bit of confidence. Don't allow them to keep this game close because if they do, this could be a dogfight coming into the fourth quarter. Third and six, Lobos need their 45-yard line. Hopkins to throw. Has time. Now he's flushed. He is gets away. He's got across the 40, and he's going to be dropped short of the first down. Not sure he, how he got away from the sack the first time, but he has dropped at the 41, four yards short, and the Lobos are going out to punt the football. Good pressure up front by Tennessee Tech's front. And thus far, Jeff, their, their, their front five, front seven, is really bringing it. I mean, they are playing hard. They're running a lot of games up front as well, so you're seeing a lot of movement from the defensive linemen, and that seems to be giving this UNM offensive line some fits early on in this football game. Marcellus Jackson back to receive the punt. Actually, it's not Marcellus Jackson, is it? He takes it at the five and has got some room. He's across the 20 and the 25, and look out, all the way out to the 40-yard line. That is going to be Quavell Thornton returning punts. Flag on the play out way back at the 50-yard line, 48-yard line. So let's hear what that is. But a nice return by Thornton. And if the penalty's on New Mexico, the Golden Eagles are set up in a good spot. See where they are. And that was a beautiful punt from Aaron Rodriguez, partner. But sometimes what happens is you outkick your coverage, and that's what we saw there. I'm familiar U with that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> UNM just was not able to keep up with that ball. Not During the kick, time. holding number 18, Tennessee Tech. Ball be half the distance from the goal. First down, Tennessee Tech. That's a big break because Thornton found a seam and got a whole lot of real estate right up the gut of that Lobo special teams. Right now, I'm looking down on the sidelines. I see some coaches pretty concerned on this near sideline. Yeah, man. I mean, that, that, that was a huge break for this Lobo football team. And they're, they, they've got to clean some things up because right now, Tennessee Tech is being the aggressor. So instead of having the ball out near the 40, the Golden Eagles are going to start all the way back at their own two. Kind of odd, too, because the flag was on the other 48. That's where the flag was on the turf. 50 yards away from where the ball is right now. Yeah, real shame because it was it was completely away from the play, right? It was something that happened in the play of football but didn't necessarily impact the final outcome of what happened and takes away a huge play for Tennessee Tech. So in his own end zone, Ethan Roberts is the quarterback. Allen is off to his right hip. Gives it to Allen. Rolls his way out to the seven-yard line after an initial hit at the line of scrimmage. Give him three. Maybe, yeah, probably three, and it'll be second down and seven, but they got a little room to breathe now. Yeah, and Tennessee Tech is consistently staying in 12 personnel, which means they're bringing two tight ends out, which is generally a, uh, a run formation, and so they are pounding this Lobo defensive front. That's right the end now. of the first quarter. First, Timeout on the field. First quarter's in the books. Tennessee Tech will have it second down and seven when we get back. New Mexico seven, Tennessee Tech seven. We'll be back. You are all for free with the Mountain West app. Available on mobile and connected TV devices. Download the Mountain West app today. First play of the second quarter. It's second down and seven for Tennessee Tech. They hand it right up to Allen in the middle, and he is stopped by number 16, Dimitri Johnson. A gain of about two, maybe three. Looks like it's going to be third down and four for the Golden Eagles. A good first half for Tennessee Tech on offense. 
They ran the ball, did Tennessee Tech for 78 yards, threw it for 43 against a Lobo defense that's looking to hold right now. Jeff Sabietta, George Carter, University Stadium in Albuquerque, 7-7 as we get started here in the second quarter. Second possession for the Golden Eagles. Out of the OVC, an FCS team. Ethan Roberts is the quarterback. Fakes the handoff, stands in, goes deep, left side, and overthrows Metrius Fleming, and there's a flag on the play. Noah Pola Gates was defending for New Mexico, and he may get called for pass interference. This was a problem certainly for the Lobos last week, right? Yeah, and he's been a little bit of a liability for this defense. I mean, he has himself racked up at least four or five penalties in the pass interference room uh, since starting this 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 season and so that is becoming a liability for this Lobo defense it'll be interesting to see if he begins to move out move in and out of the game a little bit more pass interference number nine defense 15 yard penalty automatic first down third penalty accepted against the Lobos and that's a big one because you were getting off the field. This is the one where this is where coaches point all the time. That one play, this one play. Well, that keeps Tennessee Tech's offense on the field, and it'll be first down at the 23 for the Golden Eagles. And again, this Tennessee Tech team saw the film from last week, so they know sure. that that is one of the weak points of this Lobo defense, and not surprised that they're targeting Paula Gates uh, coming out at the start of this football game. Another flag. This one should go against Tennessee Tech. 73. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 73 offense. Five-yard penalty remained first down. So five yards back. JV and Allen's run for 31 yards so far in the first quarter plus a few plays. Caught two passes for 18 yards. He's been a big chunk of their offense. Their quarterback, Ethan Roberts, looks a whole lot better, making his second start this week in his career then certainly he might have last week against Furman where he turned the ball over a bunch of times. Two pick sixes against them last week. So far, they look terrific. First and 15. Quarterback's going to keep it. He goes nowhere. Big man was not filled. That is fooled with Sire Riley, the linebacker, who got into the backfield and was able to drop the quarterback for a three-yard loss. Yeah, and partner, let's talk a little bit about the tempo of the football game, right? I mean, the first quarter, you're generally trying to fill each other out. And then when you come around to the second quarter, you're beginning to settle the game down a little bit and settle into what you do, settle into your game plan. And so it's going to be interesting to see how this second quarter plays out with both sides of the football. First time that the Eagles have had a play from behind the sticks. Second down and 17. Roberts flushed, rolls and throws. It is caught on the sideline and it is going to be ruled complete. Brad Clark was there for the reception. A gain of about 11 and a nice chunk on second and 17, and it makes it third down and manageable for Tennessee Tech. Yeah, the Lobo defensive front is just not getting enough pressure up, up front right now uh, on this Tennessee Tech offensive line. They're doing a good job of holding in there, picking up the blitzes when the Lobos decide to come, and they're also finding the spots. Robert is, Roberts is doing a really nice job finding his guys on the outside. They need the 34 to get the first down. Allen's the running back. Robert, or It's not the running back. It's Pegues, and he looks to the right side. It is caught. Again, it is Clark. Again, it is complete. Are they going to rule him out of bounds? It is ruled incomplete, and yeah, they are going it, to have it, to punt. It looks like Morris was actually able to get his hand in there yeah. and break that thing up a little bit right on the sideline. And, but, I mean, again, fantastic job. Zach Morris defending for New Mexico. This is what the coaches were saying, too. It's technique. Be active with yep. your hands. Yep, indeed. Luke Wysong back to receive the punt for New Mexico. Back at the 33, and he is met kind of by a wall of red shirts who were pushed into him, and that's where the Lobos are going to take over. First Time out on for the New field. Mexico when we get back. 12.34 to go. Second quarter. Lobos 7, Golden Eagles 7 here in Albuquerque. Pushed out at about the 47-yard line. A gain of 20 on first down for the Lobos. Mama, there go that man again. He just keeps getting out the gate. He is giving this Tennessee Tech uh, 
front seven a fit right now. I mean, it is difficult to bring him down. He's running the football hard, and he's just someone you don't want to see. One of three Lobo transfers from Alabama State, and this young man loves it here, and they love him. He's got explosive speed at a 48-yard touchdown in the first quarter, scored the Lobo touchdown last week at Texas A&M, and he's the lone setback behind Hopkins again. Dylan's going to throw to the near side, and it is intercepted. Intercepted on a terrific play by Jackson Price, jumping in front of the intended receiver, Caleb Medford. First turnover of the day is an interception, and it's First going to be down to the Yeah, and just a very uncharacteristic throw from Dylan Hopkins. He's generally pretty good at protecting the football, but there he lets it slot. Oh, we got, we got a little bit of a replay here. It looks like he just jumped the route. Yeah, he sure did, and Caleb didn't come back to the ball, waited for it to come to him, and that's just a terrific play by the defensive back out there coming out and making a, making a play. That's Jackson Price. He is a grad student from transfer from Colgate and just went out and made a play, so the Golden Eagles are set up beautifully at midfield in a 7-7 ball game. Ethan Roberts with J.B. Allen on his left hip. Keeps it and throws to the tight end on the near side. It'll be a gain of about three. That is Reese Perkins, the sophomore tight end. And they'll utilize three of them. You saw them go to Hunter Barnhart earlier. That is Perkins, the sophomore. Gain of four, second down six. Whole different looking offense than we watched on tape in it against the Furman game. Big time, man. I mean, they they are they are getting in a rhythm. Uh, they're very balanced right now. They're doing a great job of mixing it up. Lots of different formations, moving people around. And again, they've got this Lobo defense on their heels right now. Roberts looks over to the bench. Six on the play clock. Now they're running out of time. You better get a snap off. It looks like it hit zero. It sure did hit zero. That's going to be a delay of game. It's a young man who made his first start last week. Delay game, offense, Tennessee Tech. Five-yard penalty, remain, second down. And you, George, coaches tell you all the time, teams make their biggest improvements from week one to two. Well, a guy who's making his first collegiate start, I got to believe from week one to week two, is, is got growth for incredible growth. Yeah, clearly he took it personal and he's accepting the challenge and he's stepping up. I mean, last week he had two pick sixes uh, in that football game and that's not going to leave too good of a taste in your mouth. So tonight he's coming out and he's showing us what he's here to do from Roswell, Georgia. Second down and 11. He pitches to Allen on the near side and he gets run out of bounds. At, got out about to about the 48-yard line. Bunch of Lobos were there. Marenko there again. Alex all over the field so far today. He's a big part of it, isn't it? Alec Marenko, a young man from Burgess High School in El Paso, missed a bunch of time last year, played five games last year, then had the ACL injury, been dealing with a little shoulder injury in camp. But a guy that really gets all over the field, and with some of the transfers, this was a great opportunity for him and Ray Leotele. Yeah, big time. I mean, he plays with a lot of intensity, another one of these high-motor guys that you need on this Lobo defense. But they're going to have to hold tough here because they've got a big third and six. Golden Eagles need the 40 to keep their drive alive or to keep – get a first down they may go for it who knows three to get the playoff Roberts just does here come the Lobos he flips it to the right side incomplete looking for Quavel Thornton covered there very nicely by Christian Ellis indeed and like we talked about earlier partner uh, you know leading up to the game this Lobo defense is going to need to start getting a bit more production outside, out, out of their linebackers. That was the first time I think they got pressure. Well, that's not right. I, I thought on the touchdown pass they got some pressure on him. Yeah. He stood in and, and was able to deliver. That was the first time it looked like the pressure bothered him. Exactly, exactly. Back to receive is Luke Wysong, the punter for the Golden Eagles, is Nick Bigelow. Bigelow's kick is high. Fair catch called for and made by Wysong just outside the 10-yard line. Nine minutes, 49 seconds to go. Right, we are right, in the right, second right, quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. Timeout on the field. Thank you, sir. New Mexico and Tennessee Tech tied at 7. Hey, baby. Why does he got to get in there and tell us that every time? Oh. You know, you don't have to do this. It is on my bucket list. 
So is the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And I just got tickets. Yep, let's definitely do that one first. Come on, let's go. Get to the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, October 7th through the 15th for high. Out to the 14 yard line, six yard gain, third down and seven. Yeah, and I mean, we talked a lot about the front seven on the Tennessee Tech side, but they've, the, the secondary has also been doing a really nice job of, of, of bottling up these UNM receivers, not letting them get into the open zones, any of the open holes. They've been doing a really nice job of keeping pressure on these guys. Lobos need the 21. Wyatt McClure, number 84, one of the tight ends in for New Mexico. They've got about six of them that they like to run in and out. Two tight ends set. Hopkins, clean pocket, near side, caught by Wysong, out to about the 22, should be enough for a first down, depending on the mark, and it will be first down, New Mexico, needed seven, they got eight. Good throw by Hopkins, knew where he wanted to go. You're going to probably see more Luke Wysong today. Last week's leading receiver, Jeremiah Hickson, is, I believe, dressed, but they don't want to play him, probably not going to play today. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a wrist issue. Going to keep him out this week, I think, just to keep him healthy because he is going to be a dynamic playmaker for this Lobo offense as the season goes on. And so keep that guy healthy. First down, New Mexico. Krosky Merritt the back. Fake to him. Hopkins throws over the off to the right side and complete again. Luke Wysong all the way out to the 39-yard the line. A gain of 17 and a first down for New Mexico. Good pitch and catch. And it looks like Hopkins and Wysong are starting to get something together. Yeah, and it looks like there's been a little bit of an adjustment. UNM is continuing to run 12 personnel, keeping two tight ends in there. And they're generally keeping one of those tight ends behind to allow them to block and keep in max protection. When you say 12 personnel, explain it to the guy who does, or the young lady who might not know. Yeah, so two tight ends, one running back uh, in, the, in the offensive formation. The one running back is Krosky Merrick. He's got the Lobo touchdown. He's got the football. Slips through. Nope, he's not going anywhere this time. Good stop right at the line of scrimmage by big number 97 for Tennessee Tech, who broke through and was having none of that. That is Canston uh, Brooks. Big play by Canston Brooks. So that's a loss of a yard, second down and 11. Good penetration up front by them on that. This has been the Lobo chunks on this particular drive. Now, not all night. There's been a 48 and a 20 yard run by Bill, but on this particular drive, they've been getting yards through the air. Now we got a stoppage. The previous play is under further review for targeting. Interesting. Interesting. Did mm. you see something there? It might, might have been somebody flying in late, right? Krosky Merritt, yeah, I mean, he was, he was tangled up with a couple of guys, and then you had someone trying to come in and clean, in, clean up the pile, and that could be what they're looking at here. All right, while we do that, I want to get you some uh, an idea of what's going on around college football and, and, uh, and other stuff around the Mountain West as we are here on the Mountain West Network. A big day in college football. Let's take a look at the play that they're looking at uh, while we're in this. So let's see what we see here. Uh, you've got helmet to helmet of that number six coming in to clean up the pile there. I mean, in my opinion, that young man is just playing football. Yeah, a lot of times, though, it's, it's really not intent, right? We're talking about Jiren Gilmore, number six, who would come in late like that. If that, I, I got to believe that's who they're looking at. Has to be. After further review, there is no target on the play. Second down. The clock will start on my ready. All right, some other Mountain West scores as we go through it. Nevada's losing to Idaho right now, 24 to six in the third. Boise State up on UCF, 10-9 at halftime. UCLA is winning down at Snapdragon in, in San Diego State, twenty-one to ten. Air Force up on Sac or Sam Houston State, three nothing, and Utah State up twenty-eight-seven on Idaho State. I'll keep you up to date as we go through the night. Six thirty to go here. Second down, eleven for New Mexico. Sherrod White is the running back in now, on the right hip of Dylan Hopkins. Fakes to him and throws to the right side, and that is a nice pitch and throw. Andrew Erickson with a terrific catch because he had the defender draped all over him. That is number five uh, for, with a terrific defensive play. Was, I mean, I don't know how, how Nyquan Washington can play any better defense. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's great play all around, right? Quarterback play, wide receiver play, 
corner play. And that is the type of ball I saw Dylan Hopkins throw this, this out this week at practice, and I mean, he just nails it. When you're trying to throw those outs or those comebacks, you have to really press the ball in between the sideline and your wide receiver, and he did just that exactly in the space that his wide receiver and his wide receiver only could catch the football. Fake to wide Hopkins to throw again. This time he's going deep. Flag is on the play. It is caught for a touchdown by Caleb Medford with a receiver all over him, and that would be a 50-yard touchdown pass if it, or with a defender all over him if it stands, and I believe it will, 50 yards, Hopkins to Caleb Medford. Yeah, and that's another one of those balls I watched uh, Hopkins throw all week, and he doesn't miss off. Holding number five defense. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Well, that's what you needed. It, it, the coaching staff told me yesterday – we want to take a few more shots. That's kind of the first shot they've really gone deep downfield on it. But there you, you see defending on it. It's Nyquan Washington defending on it. Nice play by Medford. First touchdown as a Lobo. He goes in. The transfer from TCU makes the first touchdown catch of his Lobo career. 50 yards in New Mexico is up 13-7. And there you can really see the touch and the accuracy that Dylan Hopkins plays with. I mean, that's a difficult throw, but nine times out of ten, particularly in practice, but now we're seeing it uh, transfer into the game. He makes that throw, and the receiver's been making that catch. So glad the to see that. The ruling on the field is completed together. pass for a touchdown. That play is under further review. Well, it's in everything these days, huh? Let's take a look at it again. So I wonder if they're questioning the spot or if he caught the ball. Let's see where it is, because I don't think there's a doubt he caught the ball, right? Not sure if he made it into the end zone. Right, His that's what they're going to check right there. Where's the ball? And, again, I don't know, if, unless we've got something on the goal line, right, where is the ball when his knee comes down? It's not down yet. It's not down yet. It's down there. They may mark it at the one, huh? Well, that's really close. You can't that's tell because that close. could be over. And unless there's a, a shot directly down the goal line, it doesn't look yeah, to anything. Me, the evidence is inconclusive there. That's a touchdown. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. Meanwhile, whether it's a touchdown or not, what a pitch and catch, huh? Great pitch and catch, and nice job with the offensive line protecting and giving Hopkins enough time to be able to go through all of his reads and get the ball out and get the ball out accurately. So, George, I think over the last few years, you and I have talked about it, and we're not the only ones. Lobo offense struggled. I mean, statistically, there's no hiding from where UNM was offensively in NCAA FBS football. And I think you and I both agree it was, it was, a, it was a combination of things. They didn't have a bunch of playmakers. And it feels like with the transfer portal and guys that they brought in, like Medford, like Deuce Jones we haven't seen yet, DJ Washington, Jeremiah Hickson, Ja'Cory Krosky, Merrick, certainly, it feels like there are guys that can make plays and run away from you. Yeah, it does. And, I mean, the Lobos have done a nice job taking advantage of this new landscape of college football, particularly on the offensive side of the football. And, again, this looks like a completely different offensive unit out there than we've seen in the past. But there's a couple keys. After review, the runner's knee was down short of the goal line. The ball will be placed at the half-yard line, first down. So Caleb Medford does not get his first touchdown <laughs> as a Lobo. Take that one off the board. He, get, he does get a 49-yard reception pitch and catch from Dylan Hopkins. Hopkins' number is now 9 for 10, 107 yards and one interception. you got to take the touchdown off, so it'll probably be 106. Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick may get to cash the check. He scored both of the Lobos' touchdowns on the season, and the young man from Alabama State is number five, and he's the running back. The young man they call Bill, and well, we got Booper. And now you got a problem. Ball start, number 84, offense. Five-yard penalty remained, first down. 84 is Wyatt McClure, one of the tight ends who's in there. And so instead of a touchdown now, boy, I'll tell you what, if they, if they don't get in the end zone, I don't want to be in the locker room at halftime. I'll tell you, man, I mean, again, just these mistakes at critical junctures of the football game, right? That's what we continue to see, and this is an emerging theme. With Correction. Delay on defense, number 19. Oh, that's very different. Oh, Half wow. the distance to the goal, remain first down. Well, to the McClure family, I would apologize, but really <laughs> it should be Cal McNeil who's got to apologize because he called your son out. All I did was give his <laughs> name. All right, so it's first down and goal. They're inside the one. Bill in motion. The handoff to Bill. Touchdown, New Mexico. Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt from a yard out. His third touchdown on the season, second of the game, and the Lobos are up by a touchdown. 
Oh, and you can't see the new lights, partner, but we've got new new LED lights that, that flicker when the Lobo oh, score a touchdown. When, in the second half, assuming they score some touchdowns when it gets yes. dark, you will. There you go. There All you right, go. so here's the replay on that. Just an inside handoff going off of the left side and running over Tito Stafford and J.C. Davis on that left side. The bigs have been pretty good for the Lobos. The, the offensive line has been pretty good, and they were happy the coaching staff was even last week in the, in the loss at A&M. Luke Drizwicki on for the extra point, and it is solid, and the Lobos have a 14-7 lead. Fifth, five minutes. Timeout on the field. Five minutes, 15 seconds to go. We are in the second quarter. We'll be right back. Lobos lead Tennessee Tech Golden this one's going to be taken at the three-yard line by Torrin Baker, who gets drilled. Drilled on the hit. That is number 26 for New Mexico, making the hit on special teams. Tate Zimmerman, the young man from Irvine, California. So, eight plays, 89 yards, and 434. This is an interesting fact, and I'm not sure what it means, but it means something. Lobos have had three touchdown drives this season. One last week at Texas A&M and two today. 87, 88, and 89. Mm. Mean anything to you? <laughs> I mean, I, I, obviously, I, I think the answer is, well, not enough, but they've had a couple sustained drives. That's Allen on the far side, pushed out of bounds after a gain of about two yards, and it'll be second down. So a big drive both now for Tennessee Tech's offense and for New Mexico's defense. Tennessee Tech has moved the ball today. They've got, in total offense, a bunch of yards. 100 yards. 202 yards for New Mexico. 4.49 to go. Ethan Roberts is the quarterback, making his second start for Texas or for Tennessee Tech. Plenty of time as he looks over and gets the change. They run the option, a late pitch to Allen, and a nice pitch to Allen, who weaves his way all the way out to the 25-yard line and a first down. Nice late pitch by Ethan Allen, yeah, or e Ethan Roberts. Yeah, Ethan Roberts is really doing some, 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 some good stuff tonight. He's playing a very solid football game. He's taking care of the football, and Allen, man, is just continuing to be a beast, chewing up yards 10 at a time. First down for the Golden Eagles. Allen, seven carries, 31 yards for Tennessee Tech. Empty backfield, and now Allen motions back in for Ethan Roberts. 355 and counting. They give it to Allen. Finds his way across the 25 to the, ah, about the 28-yard line. Gain of three. He's a slashy, twitchy little runner, isn't he? He is, and I got to tell you, this Tennessee Tech offensive line is doing some things now. They're moving this line of scrimmage two, three yards back, and it's giving this UNM front, se UNM front seven a difficult time. They're not able to get into their rhythm and really attack the front of this Tennessee Tech defense, they or offense. They went over the right side over Logan Weedman, Wes Delk. Those are the offensive linemen on the right side for Tennessee Tech. Big guys never get their names called, do they? Unless they did no something love. wrong. McGee stays back to block. They flip it far side, and it's incomplete. The guy in the area was Brad Clark. He was not open. Roberts threw it out of bounds. It'll be third down and seven with three minutes and ten seconds to go. 14-7 Lobos. Weird flow, huh? It's been a really – it's been an interesting game this far. I don't want to call it clunky, but it has definitely been a, uh, a back-and-forth affair. No, well, that's fair. All right, they got to get to the 30, just outside the 35-yard line. Roberts throw, looks right, throws right, complete. Clark pushed out of bounds. It looks to be just short of the first down by Zach Morris, and it is. He was right near the sticks, but Zach Morris wouldn't let him turn up the field. There's a flag on the play. Morris on that left corner, they've been throwing at him a lot today. They really have been. They, they, they must have seen something there on tape to continue to work because I'll tell you what, we all know a little bit about Dante Martin, and he is about as shut down as they come uh, as it relates to We haven't said his corners. name, have we? We have not. We have not, have said, not said, said one thing. I know Lobo. Let's see what Cam will All sides, said. number 30, man, defense, man. in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, replay, third down. 
That's Ray Leo Taylor. That's at least the fourth offsides. That's lining up offsides. Yeah, and just, you know, undisciplined, undisciplined play that we're seeing from this Lobo front seven up in, particularly with the linebackers. And when they're showing their blitz, they're just getting a little too anxious uh, and jumping into that neutral zone. So instead of getting off the field, it's third down and short. Golden Eagles give it to Allen right up the middle, and wow. he is hit right away. He did not get there. He did not get there. I think it was Hunter Rapola, the first guy who came off that left end and leveled him, and it looked to be about a yard short, and it is. Here's a replay yeah, on it, and it is right, Rapola. That, that is Rapola. Field, short, line the game, fourth down. Hunter Rapola just came in untouched off that left side and put the initial hit on, and they are going to have to punt the football. Big, big defensive play by the junior college transfer from Mount San Jacinto in California. So Wysong back, Bigelow will kick, 2.15 and counting. The Lobos are going to have another chance to try to put a little bit more on the scoreboard. Wysong at the 22. Fair catch, and we're going to keep it right here. So two minutes, six seconds. Here's a really nice opportunity, partner to figure out what you got on a two-minute offense, too. Yeah, exactly, and I mean, you practice this every single day at practice, right? I mean, th that's the reality. You you go through this drill, and so I can guarantee you that Coach Vincent has a script, and he's going to get ready to break it out and see what this Lobo offense can do with two minutes ticking down. All right, it'll be Dylan Hopkins. He's the quarterback. Hopkins, 9 of 10, 106 yards and in an interception in his second start as a Lobo. The running back, Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick. Washington motions to the near side, fake to Bill, and going deep. And he's got a man deep, and it is complete deep, all the way for a touchdown deep. Call it 78 yards worth of deep to Deuce Jones. Deuce Jones, the converted cornerback. First touchdown of a, as a Lobo, first touchdown of the year. First touchdown pass of his Lobo career for Dylan Hopkins. It goes 78 yards and a home run as he got by everyone. Absolutely beautiful play. It looks like Hopkins understood from the get-go that they were they were playing man coverage. He didn't see the safety have or he didn't see the corner had any help over the top. And Deuce Jones just ran right by his man and touched down Lobos. 78 yards. Drizwicki on for the extra point. Helps everybody's stats, doesn't it? When you get one for 78, the kick is on the way and good, and the Lobos have a 21-7 to lead. You know, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you they're dominating this team because they're not. But it sure makes you feel a whole lot better going into that locker room 21-7 if that's if they can hold them with a minute 56 to go. Yeah, and we've seen some big plays out of this Lobo offense tonight, and that has been one of the things that's actually been lacking from their offense over the years is their ability to stretch the ball down the football field, and we've really seen that, especially on these last two drives. They've really been able to open up this Tennessee Tech defense, back them off, play some man coverage, and drop the ball right over the head of these uh, Tennessee Tech defenders. That's the old... Let me see. Let's see if your guys are as good as my guys, and let's just go line up and play football. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I said this after watching Colorado play TCU last week. You know, sometimes I, everybody wanted to d dissect what happened. I mean, I came out and said, those dudes in white were better than those dudes in purple or black last week, right? Plain and simple. Sometimes my dudes are better, and I think that's. Number 21 from New Mexico checked his number 56 on the kicking team. I think that's how they feel, right? But you got to go prove it because these guys in white feel like they're pretty doggone good too. Torrin Baker will be back to receive for, he's back there along with Javian Allen for Tennessee Tech. So now you're Dwayne Alexander, Tennessee Tech. You're getting the ball back with a minute 56 seconds to go. You've got two timeouts left. It's imperative kind of for you, right, to go down and get at least three? You've got to do something. Your offense has been moving the football all night. You've got to just go back to the basics, limit the mistakes, and execute on this final drive. Same thing. These guys also practice yeah, their two-minute drill. They right? got video. They got scholarships. Yeah. They put their pants on the same yeah. way. So they have the ability, particularly on the outside, you know, looking at guys like uh, Brad Clark, to, to stretch this Lobo defense and make some plays. So let's see what the last two minutes look like here. So 21-7 New Mexico. 280 yards of offense for the Lobos, 114, mostly on that first drive. Do you feel the Lobo defense got better after that first drive? I do. They've been able to settle in a bit. 
I feel like they're getting a bit more of a push up front, right? And they've been able to slow down the play, the, the pace of play from this Tennessee Tech offense thus Which far. Which is something they want to do. They wanted to go quick. They wanted to fool you with motion, throw you a lot of different combos. Right now they got three wide left, two right wide to the short side, the right side. Ethan Roberts is their quarterback. He's gone the whole way, making his second start, flips it over the middle, and it is complete. And getting across the 40 and pushed out of bounds, it is complete for a first down. That is number two. Quinton Cross. First catch for Quinton Cross. So first down, and they go back quick. Minute 49 to go. Roberts looks right again. He likes to look right, and he's got his man. That is Javian Allen. A terrific, that's not, it's Pagis. Wow. And Sayer Riley just put a hurting on Ethan Roberts, and he may be out of this football game. So I was watching Pagese run down the sideline. I didn't see the hit on the quarterback. But obviously there's two flags down, and, boy, Ethan Roberts is laying there on his back. Now, last week they've got Hayes Gibson listed as their backup quarterback. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 36 on the defense with targeting. 15 yards added in the run, automatic first down. The previous play for targeting is under review. Hayes Gibson is the guy warming up. Now, Gibson was listed last week as the backup. When they went to the bench, it was Jordan Potts. Gibson had an injury on his non-throwing hand. Uh, it was a cut from what we were told. Mm. And so we'll see what they do if they've got to make it. It didn't look like targeting. It looked maybe a step or two late. Did you see him lower the head? I didn't see him lower the head. It looked late, definitely, but I, I, and I don't see helmet to helmet contact. One. And he hit him at the shoulder, mm. I believe, right? If that's the best look we got, I don't know how you go. Well, here we go. And we're off of it. Now, help me on this one, partner. They called targeting, but you always go to the video for review. If it's called, is this one of those? And I don't think it is. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Right. The penalty for rubbing the passer will be enforced. First down. I don't think that was – normally you have to see conclusive evidence to overturn something called on the field. Right. I believe targeting to be the outlier to that rule. Correct. Yeah. Correct. All right, meanwhile, it's another, it's, it's another 15 yards in penalties. And Lobos are really, really not doing themselves any favors in regards to penalties. I, I, I don't think anybody's arguing with the call on roughing. Are, are they? I don't think so, no. But, uh, you know, the penalties continue to just absolutely kill this football team. And ultimately what it manifests as is undisciplined play. So down to the 31-yard line. Allen's the running back. The quarterback now is Hayes Gibson. He is a sophomore. Transfer from Iowa State. Delayed. Keeps it. Goes around the right side. Ball is out. Ray Leotele. Forced the fumble, and it is picked up by Dimitri Johnson. And Johnson's running down the sideline. Johnson finally dropped at the 40-yard line, and the Lobos have the football with a minute 30 to go. Leo Taylor came up. It was the first play for Hayes Gibson. He kept it around the right side. Forced Holy the fumble. Number 66 offense. That pill is declined. The result of the play is interception. First down, New Mexico. So take a look at it again. The quarterback on his first play keeps it. There's number 30. Leo Taylor is the one who knocks it out. And Dimitri Johnson is there to pick it up. Number 16 for the Lobos. The junior college transfer who the coaches said last week made an impact on that defense. And there's a big turnover. The Lobos are in business. They have two timeouts left and a buck 30 to go. They're going to be at the 38-yard line. You know what I like to call that, partner? Young Hayes Gibson just got welcomed to college football, and he was introduced to it by Ray Luatele. And that man was laying the wood there, massive hit, make the ball pop out, and that's what this Lobo defense needs to do. They need to continue to create turnovers, and they need to continue to play with that level of aggression and knock the ball loose. You know, you see after turnovers a lot, you strike deep again, right? Right, you, of course. Lobo's Go right back shot. to it. Go right back to it. DJ Washington ride left. Andrew Erickson wide to the right. Bill, Corey Krosky Merrick is the running back behind the quarterback, Dylan Hopkins. And the referees will stop play. See what we're looking at. Linesman from the far side is the one who came in. The referee's Cal McNeil. He's got nothing to say this time, huh? 
But going over and talking to Dwayne, Al Dwayne Alexander, the coach of Tennessee Tech. All right, here we go. I guess there's all a whole lot of nothing. A minute 30 to go. First down, New Mexico. Fake to Bill. Flip to the near side and overthrew his tight end. Incomplete as he was looking for Magnus Gears. And it's a, you got to go up high to overthrow the big six foot five tight end. Got to, man, but Hopkins had pressure right in his face as soon as he started to bootleg out to the field side. Had pressure right in his face, had to get rid of that football. So it's second down for New Mexico. Up 21 7, a minute 25 to go, second quarter. Empty backfield for Hopkins, three wide right. Now Ja'Cory Krosky, Merrick, shuttles into the backfield, and he takes the pitch. Bill on the right side, speed, and gets out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Going to be a first down, a gain of 12 for Ja'Cory Krosky, Merrick, and I believe now well, puts him right at 99 yards for the day for the first half. Pretty good first half for this young man who came over from Alabama State. Yeah, he just seems to get up the field so quickly. Before you know it, he's already four or five yards down the football field, and I don't know if it's because of his long stride or just he's that quick, but boy, he is really showing us some things tonight and his ability to get outside of the tackles and make some plays up front. 5'11", wow. 204, senior transfer from Alabama State. Hopkins wants to throw, goes deep left, has Washington, threw it out of bounds. Good coverage there by Cameron Hudson for the Golden Eagles. Stops the clock with a minute 11 to go, and it'll be second down for the Lobos. And this UNM offense is continuing to put pressure on the outside, uh, the corners of, of this uh, Tennessee Tech defense here, man. I mean, they're really beginning to stretch the field, open things up. You're seeing the arm strength and the precision of Dylan Hopkins, but you're also beginning to see the ability of these Lobo receivers to really create some space and do things out in the open. We've talked to Coach Vincent. He thinks DJ Washington is special. We haven't really been able to see the fireworks yet, but let's hope we get to see him do some good things you know, tonight. I knew they wanted to go to him. They love him in the goal line situations. There's Bill. Uh, nope, nope, nope. That is Lewis. Dorian Lewis got the carry. He loses a yard, and a timeout's being called by the Lobos. So Dorian Lewis got the call, and it'll be timeout. third down at 11. New Mexico. They, Their second timeout of the half, 30 seconds in length. They love D.J. Washington's size, and, and this is in a goal line situation from 25, 26, 27 yards out. But they, they love being able to throw that jump ball to him, and that's what they did that time. And it was pretty good coverage by Cameron Hudson on that play. And here's that play again. I mean, Hudson's right there. The ball might be a step out of bounds, but – that didn't surprise me at all that that's where they want to go, and I wouldn't be surprised they go back there. I, I agree. I mean, this young man is 6'5", 215, 220. He's a really big, imposing physical presence all out there on the outside, and so it's going to be interesting to see how UNM continues to work him into the offense because he's not just a straight go guy or a fade guy. He's actually got the ability to run some routes now, and for someone of that size, that's a pretty unique characteristic uh, of someone of that size and that has that ability. Third down, 11. Lobos have one timeout left. Need to get to the the, uh, to the 16 yard line for a first down. Jakrowski Merrick back in as the running back next to Dylan Hopkins. Dylan with time, clean pocket, throws over the middle. It is caught for a New Mexico touchdown to Luke Wysong. 27 yards, Hopkins with lots of time. Touchdown. Makes it 27-7. All right, we're clear. Spot and go, Rico. Spot and go. We're clear. Yeah, we probably don't need to listen to him anymore, do we? What do you see here? And as you can Other see, a look at that beautiful pocket. I mean, that UNM offensive line, that was about as, as good as it gets. Dylan Hopkins was able to go through all of his progressions. He then sees Wysong streaking across that zone, finding the open spot, and his anticipation is just next level. Wysong was coming out of his break, and that ball was already out of Hopkins' hands. And what do you get on the other end of that? A Lobo football touchdown. Well, they've got a pretty good ma ma matchup between the two of them, Hopkins and Wysong. Luke's got four catches today for 53 yards and a touchdown. And Dylan's putting up some numbers now, 11 of 14, 211 yards two touchdowns and an interception for the transfer from UAB. Um, 
feels like this place breathing a little easier than it was, I don't know, about a half hour ago. Yeah, big time. And we talked about this at the onset of the, the, the second quarter, right? This is the opportunity for teams to really settle in and begin to execute their game plan. What we're seeing on the UNM side is they've been able to do that on the offensive side of the football and the defensive side of the football. With Tennessee Tech, they've really struggled. The penalties have killed them. And then as well, UNM defensively is starting to get some pressure, partner. That, I think, is the thing that is beginning to throw off the rhythm of this Tennessee Tech offense. Ezra Widelock goes back for Tennessee Tech along with Torin Baker to receive the Luke Drizwicki kick. So the Golden Eagles will have two timeouts left and 55-ish seconds. It's going to be interesting to see who their quarterback is going to be when they come back out. Ethan Roberts got knocked out for a play on a roughing the passer. Well, that one play was a turnover when Hayes Gibson came in and Ray Leo Taylor forced the fumble that led to the New Mexico scoring drive. A fair catch is called by Baker, and so they'll get the ball at the 25-yard line. So let's see who they're sending out as quarterback. It's going to be Ethan Roberts. Number 14 looks like he's good. He was knocked down. He was attended to on the field. And so did go out for a play, but they're starting quarterbacks back in. And, look, we're not talking about a ton of experience here, George. He's making his second start, and the young man looked good on the first couple of drives, got hit, and now they find, find themselves down 28-7 and going to play from behind for, the, for a little while. Yeah, and just like we talked about, uh, partner, this UNM defense is really starting to get some pressure up front, and I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Reffitt and Coach Gonzalez really start bringing the house in the second half. They've got a bit of a lead. Now it's time to put the hammer in the nail. J.B. Allen on the play. Gabe Lopez and Sayer Riley on the tackle for New Mexico. Gain of about six, second down and four with the clock moving at 38 seconds. Allen again stutters to the outside, now back into the gaggle where he is dragged down, but he'll get a first down. Gets across the 35 to the 36 and a first down. Clock stops to move the chains. Now let's see what Dwayne Alexander does. Does he want to throw it a little bit? He's got 30 seconds to go and two timeouts. Roberts looks right, throws right out of the backfield. That's Pagese. Pagese gets himself 12 out of bounds at the 48-yard line. They love that wheel route, don't they? They really do, and it's been open for them yeah, all, night. all night. I mean, particularly as this, this Lobo defense is playing a lot of man coverage. And with that motion, they're moving people across the formation, and that is throwing off the linebacker's ability to get out and get out into the routes. And so they're able to throw those quick wheel routes and get some hay off of it. Pagese stays in, rolls right. Roberts looks at him, now flips it over the middle. It is complete for a short game. That is caught by number six, Quavell Thornton, in a timeout called by Tennessee Tech. So a gain of about two. And now let's see what they do. They want to take a shot. They want to just take this thing to halftime. See what Dwayne Alexander wants to do. Roberts numbers on the night. Six for 11, 55 yards in the touchdown. Allen's been their main gun. Carried the ball seven times for 31 yards, and he's caught two balls for 18 yards. George, we start, started the second quarter, and it was 7-7. Seven, seven. And I, I, this place was, was breathing a little tight. You could feel the tension in here. I don't. They, Lobo scored two touchdowns within about a minute and one second of game time to open this thing from 14-7 to 28-7. What's the locker room going to be like? Assume, gonna, assuming it goes in like this. Yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be some excitement in the locker room. But now, you know, as we talked about at the onset of this game, partner, again, this is a football team that is, is has lost their last 10 games, yeah. right? And so how do you go out and finish? And I think that is going to be the theme in the locker room with Coach Gonzalez and the rest of the staff is we've got to go out and finish this football team. Second down and eight for Tennessee Tech. Roberts right side, and that is going to be caught. Was he inbounds? He is ruled to be – went up and got it, Demetrius Fleming, but he's ruled out of bounds. Good catch by that young man. 
Fantastic catch. And I've got to say, I've been really impressed with the athletic ability yeah. of these Tennessee Tech wide receivers, man. I mean, they are out there making plays tonight, making difficult catches, making contested catches, and they're giving their quarterback the best chance that they can. He's a fifth-year grad student, is Fleming. Roberts now flushed out of the pocket, rolls to the right and throws it on the right side, and that is caught at the 20-yard line by number 88, Hunter Barnhart. Zach Morris was on him, and this may set him up for a field goal with one second to go. I think you're right. It's a big play right That's there. It's a huge play. Huge play. Roberts had got flushed out of the pocket. You see him on the run, puts this right on his tight end, right between the eight and the eight. Zach was on him, Zach Morris, but we're going to get a field goal attempt. This will be about 37 yards. So that's a big play for them to take a little momentum going in. That's a huge play because if they get this three points, they also get the ball at the start of the second half. And so we could potentially see a 10-point swing here uh, if things go the way for uh, Tennessee Tech. Yep. Well, these, you know, coaches always need something, not that they didn't have something, right? But they always need something to get on you about going into the locker room. Not that they needed something, but they got something. So Hayden Olsen is their kicker. Left-footed junior out of Beaufort, Georgia. This will be down at the 37-yard line. Last play of the first half. There's one second remaining. Snap and kick on the way. Plenty of room, and it is good. And so with no time on the clock, a 37-yard field goal by Hayden Olson Cuts the lead, and it's going to be interesting. I think the crowd – I mean. Crowd should feel pretty good about themselves going in, shouldn't they? I, I would agree, my friend. I would agree. This is a really good first half of football for this Lobo football team on both sides of the ball. They really settled in in the second. Success moving the football. So let's see what they are able to do. And, and it's kind of been even, right? I mean, uh, uh, maybe close to 50-50, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. So JV and Allen comes in. He's the lone setback on the left hip of the quarterback, Ethan Roberts. Low snap, and it's on the ground all the way back to the three where Allen picks it up, and he's being chased. Gets Does a nice job to get all the way back out to the 17-yard line, but a loss of seven on a bad snap as Nate Hodnett rolled it back to his quarterback. And that's not the way you want to start the second Whoa. half. You've already got this, this defense bearing down on you. They're, they're getting ready to put the, 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 the hammer on the nail, and uh, that's just not how you want to start. You're already behind the change, and you're deep in their territory. Now it'll be second down and 19, a loss of nine. Changes everything. And, and even if you thought that what you wanted to do, right, you kind of had an idea coming out of the locker room, well, let's go deep. And Roberts does, and it is incomplete. There is Dante Martin. They threw at him that time, and they were looking for Metrius Fleming, Martin in coverage, and it's going to be third and 19. Well, I think we've got another offsides penalty up on the top here. Yes, you do. It's at least five. Didn't hear who it was, did you? I did not, but that's something this Lobo defense is going to have to get cleaned up. I, I want to say it's Dimitri Johnson up there at the top. Again, just a little overzealous in his ability to get lined up and start pressuring. I'll tell you uh, what, man. It, tomorrow's meetings, and you've been in meetings on Sunday, they, they are going to be uncomfortable if that they keeps are. going on. I don't care what the final score is because that's un, unforgivable. Another flag on the play. They may have jumped again. Meanwhile, it's complete on the outside, and it's going to be enough for a first down. Receivers down. It looks like number nine out there. That is Brad Clark, their best receiver. Let's see what the call is. Illegal formation. Not a five men in the backfield. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. The reason I thought it was on defense is because if they're going to let that play go, I thought maybe somebody would have jumped. They typically started if it's a procedure, but that was an illegal formation. Illegal formation. Didn't That's see that one, one coming. To too. Yeah, and it looked like Luatele was in the neutral zone again, offsides. I think that I was thinking that was what the call was going to be, but illegal formation. Good catch by the uh, the officiating crew tonight. Backs it all the way to the 15-yard line. They got to get to the 35. It's about second down and 20. And more movement on the offense. Make it 25. Wow. Self-destructive. Self Prior to snap, ball start, number 73, offense. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. Logan Weedman, the senior right tackle, is the guilty party there. Please put 1356 on the game clock. 
13.56. Cal McNeil, the guy you keep hearing. Thank you. You're welcome. Right, I mean, he just wanted to be identified, right? That's it, man. Give him a little bit of love. Second and 25 for the Golden Eagles. Backed up all the way to their own 11. Call it 24. Make you feel better? Throw over the middle and is knocked down by big number 90, Tyler Keeney. Keeney, the local guy from Los Lunas who transferred back home from UCLA, got his two big mitts up and knocked it down. It's third and 24. And another one of these young defensive Lobo football players who's going to be an absolute game wrecker as he continues to mature in this defense. I mean, you look at his size and his frame right now, playing defensive nose tackle. Uh, he is going to be one of the players, I think, that ultimately is just going to really make this Lobo defense very potent. Listed at 6'3", 277. Ethan Roberts has a long way to go. Third and 24, flips it to the near side. It's caught by the tight end. He's going to weave, weave his way down before Sire Riley gets him. That was Ezra Widelock. So on third and long, they will punt. What a weird first series. I, I don't know if that was good defense or poor execution. It feels like it was poor execution with all the penalties. Yeah, the They really hurt themselves, and then the bad snap to get it started, but Lobos will take it. Wysong back at the 42. Short punt. He comes up and waves his arms and takes it at the 42, 43 yard line. And that's where the Lobos will set up shop for their first possession of the second half. Good first half for Dylan Hopkins, who threw for 211 yards. Is this one of those now where, I, and well, I know it is. If you're New Mexico, you want to put him away. Tennessee Tech's here to win a game, they want to stay in this thing. I think Danny and the offensive staff would like to see D.C. Tabscott play a little bit. They'd like to see go deep into the depth chart and see what they've got a little bit. And try to put them away here early in the third quarter, don't you think? you got to. Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick stays in with his 100 yards. He's the back behind Dylan Hopkins. Right side, and he breaks mm. a tackle. He breaks another tackle and finally is wrapped up by big number 55, Daniel Rickard, but not before. You know, for a little guy, he got seven yards on probably what nothing was there. And you look at what he is listed at, 5'11", 204. Now, when you see him in person, he's a rock. He is. I don't believe it. I don't believe, I don't believe that 5'11", man. I mean, this kid just looks like he's about – Seven feet tall and, you know, just runs the rock hard. I mean, and again, going back to his balance and his patience, that's the other thing. You know you've got a great running back when, he, when he's able to show the patience, allow the offensive line to open things up in front of him, and he's great at anticipating where his next move is going to be. Second down and three. Wysong in motion. They give it to Bill again right up the middle. There goes Ja'Cory he Krosky Merrick. He's running away from everyone. Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick. Touchdown, New Mexico. 55 yards for Bill, and the Lobos are up 34 to 10. Yeah, and the Lobos have been able to do that all night, right? I mean, that is very a very similar play to what we saw on the early touchdown where they just completely exposed the middle of that Tennessee defense, and boom, that's the straightest line and the fastest way to get to the end zone right up the gut. I think we got a star, folks. The young man is fast. He scored on a 25-yard touchdown against AM last week. That was an impressive run, and he broke a couple of tackles. They have raved about this young man. And, look, this isn't the guy who went into camp expected to be the number one back. Right. He just amazed in camp. Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick, 12 carries, 162 yards. Timeout on the field. Oh, can you add three touchdowns to the mix? Yeah, man. What a game for this young man tonight. 12.04 to go, third quarter, Lobos lead Tennessee Tech, 35-10. You know, you don't have to do this. It is on my bucket list. So is the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And I just got tickets. Yep, let's definitely do that one first. Come on. Let's go. Get to the Albuquerque, Interna Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Put it at the top of your list. Way back in my college years, we'd stop in for a case of beers, a couple of burritos and some gas. With that awesome burrito, I'm never thinking clearly when I eat you. I'm not proud to meet you, but you're lukewarm and ready to go. 
Nobody needs to know that I'm taking you home. The legendary All Sup's Fresh Fried Burrito. Because we believe that legends aren't born, they're fried. World famous for 50 years. Join the celebration. Available at all All Sup's and Yes Way locations. Grab yours today. At Yes Way and All Sup's, join us in celebrating 50 years of the All Here we go. 21 for New Mexico is now 56. Well, there's Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick. This young man, I mean, I don't know, you, you nominate him by now, right, for Player of the Week in the Mountain West Conference. He has run for three touchdowns, 162 yards for the guy they call Bill. That young man right there, a transfer from Alabama State, is having a Conference Player of the Week night. Jeff Sabietta with George Carter. George, you've seen a lot of running backs around here. It's early. I don't, I'm, I'm not ready to crown him anything. But he's a pretty good one so far. Uh, last week against a and and he's been spectacular tonight. Yeah, he's incredibly talented, man. Again, I, I, I can't say it enough, just his ability to sit and be patient, but then also just turn on the boosters, right? He's, he's, he's running away from people. Uh, and so, yeah, man, he is an exciting, exciting running back. Excited to see what he does the rest of the season. He's man. the guy, when you went out there during camp, right, every once in a while, I said this on my show, which you should probably download the app, the Sports Animal app, and uh, the opening drive. Me, Jeff Sabiano with J.J. Buck. Weekday morning, 7 to 10 on 95.9 FM and AM 610, the Sports Animal. But I said, when I went out to camp the first time, I'm like, every once in a while there's a dude, you just go, whoa, who's, who's that, that guy? guy, right? Yeah. Who's that guy? And that, yeah. that, was, that was absolutely it. All right, Golden Eagles take over on their 25. They're down 35 to 10. Thomas still the quarterback. Pagese is the running back with him. Hands it to Pagese, who's got some room on the right side, gets out of Marenko's tackle and gets across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Finally dragged down there by Sire Riley, a gain of about six, and it'll be second down and four. Yeah, and Sire is quietly putting together a really nice football game. I want to say he's up to five or six tackles at this point, and he just continues to make his presence felt on that right side linebacker from that right, line, right side linebacker role. Tick, tick, tick. Early in the second quarter, empty backfield for Roberts. Flips it quickly to the right side. It was knocked out of the air by Dimitri Johnson. The linebacker coming in from the left side got his two big mids up and was able to knock it down. 6'3, six, two, six, 231. It was plenty big. Take a look here. And he just got in. It was being blocked by the right tackle. Dimitri got his hands up and was able just to knock her down. Third down and four for Ethan Roberts and the Golden Eagles. Justin Pagese, the running back. Roberts, quick pass, right side. It is caught. Clark on the catch. Right at the first down marker. Zach Morris was there to meet him immediately. Just enough for the first down as they get the 35 and keep the drive alive. And Clark is a ball player now, man. I mean, he has made some very difficult catches tonight. And not only has he been making catch, uh, catches out on the boundary, he's also he's not afraid to run over the middle and take a shot like he did there. Ticked under 11 minutes to go. What a pleasant late summer evening in the land of enchantment. Next week, the rivalry game, New Mexico State will be in here. They got beat by Liberty today. So they'll come in one and two and cranky. Roberts fakes to Begeese. Throws it deep on the right side. Clark almost was able to bring it in, but there is Morris again. Zach Morris been right with him all day long. Good throw. Nice breakup. And it'll be second down and 10. Yeah, fantastic pass break up there. I mean, all night this young man has been getting free. But on that time, and we've been talking a lot about technique as well, beautiful job of when you see the hands go up, you Your punch hands through. Go up, right? exactly. And that's what the coaches were telling me today. And they showed me a lot of film this week. That's why the coaches didn't feel that badly up for New Mexico on the defensive side about the performance last week. They felt that the guys were there. It's, it's just learning how to play. They're so young. Pagese takes the handoff, and he is caught from behind. Tackle on the play by New Mexico. That is number 21, Mihalis Santorinos on the play, the linebacker. So now it's third down and eight. Santorino from Sierra College, a Roner Park, California guy, Northern California, if you aren't familiar. 
third down and eight. They got to get to the 45 yard line for a first down. Empty backfield for Ethan Roberts. Now Pegues will motion back in. Lobos are coming. Six guys up front for New Mexico. They bring five of them. Flipped over the middle, and it is caught by the tight end, and it is going to be just enough for the first down. That is Hunter Barnhart on a quick pass and a nice read by the quarterback, Roberts. You saw everybody coming, found his tight end, and checked into the right play. Yeah, and we're seeing Tennessee Tech really develop into a nice rhythm here. They're, they're getting some protection. They've got an all-out blitz coming. They've been able to hold up, and Roberts is doing a good job of getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Exactly. Ten yards a clip. They're at the 45, start at the 25. Fresh set of downs for the Golden Eagles. Pagese has it running away on the right side and run out of bounds after a gain of eight or nine. A good run to the outside by Justin Pagese, the junior from Birmingham, Alabama. Had five catches last week out of the backfield for him. Yeah, and Pagese is doing a really nice job of hitting a little stutter step, and then boom, he's breaking to the outside and getting to the edge. And it doesn't seem that the, Lobo, the Lobos have any defenders out there, so he's really picking and choosing his spots. They give it to Pagese again. He finds a hole, dances to the inside, and gets across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Brought down by a few guys. Hunter Rapola was one of them. And it'll be another first down, and the Golden Eagles are moving the football. So this is that time of a game, right? You're up 35-10. You're comfortable. It's not over. But coaches just want to step on them here. And th this is one of those things where I know the defensive staff is going, what are we doing? Yeah, 100%. I mean, again, and this goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the game, partner. This team has to learn how to win football games. And in learning how to win football games, you also have to learn how to put teams to bed, right? And so that's what we need to see this Lobo defense do here, come out and continue to impose their will upon this Tennessee Tech defense. But they're getting some rhythm. Another completion, that's going to be about three yards. That goes to Quinton Cross, second catch for Cross. You know, you talk about learning how to win. I was talking to Brian Vincent this week, the offensive coordinator of New Mexico. He was the interim head coach at UAB last year. They went 7-6. and six. They won the Bahamas Bowl. One of the, just a universally respected coach. Direct snap. That's Allen who takes up the middle, and he is met by Alec Morenko in the hole. Got himself about four yards, and it'll be third down and short. And I said, I believe this. I've always talked about you got to learn how to win, right? Somebody said to me this week, it might have even been you, they know how to lose. New Mexico, how do you learn how to win? He said, it's everything. It's about how you watch film, how you practice, how you come into the building, how you lift weights. And, and he said, it's literally about every one of those things. And then how do you finish a game? Right. And I thought it was a great answer because you hear well, you got to learn how to win. But do they do it? That is a terrific play right up the gut by New Mexico's number 45. That is Kyler Drake on the stop. They gave the ball for the first time tonight to Torin Baker. And it's going to be fourth down and five. And it doesn't look like they're bringing on the punt unit. And why would they down 25 with halfway through the third quarter? So Torin Baker on his first play. And that is a terrific play by number 45 for New Mexico who jumped in there. That is Kyler Drake. And another thing really quickly just on teaching a team how to win, right? One of the other things that happens is you go from knowing what to do to why I do it, right? You become a student of a game, and I think that's what we're beginning to see with some of these younger Lobo football players fourth down, that are broke getting a bit up. more experience. Yeah, sorry about that. No, fourth, good. fourth down and a big pass breakup by New Mexico on fourth down to turn it over. That is number 12. Derek Moore, I'm sorry, Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith, the safety. Aaron Smith jumped in to break it up, and the Lobos turn it over on downs. You know, how, how to win, it, it, then you stop thinking about it, right? Right. And, and it's a progression. I don't. I, I, people tell me all the time, no, you just got to go out and do it. Well, yeah, but it's funny how Alabama and, and, and teams who know how to win continue to win, and teams that don't continue to lose, right? Right, right. There's got to be a, a point where you stop thinking about what you're doing and just react. Right. And coaches tell me all the time, I don't want my guys thinking. I, I want to get them to a point where they, they're reacting and they're doing what they're doing. Dorian Lewis is the running back for New Mexico. He gets it and dances through the hole, and Dorian Lewis gets loose across the 50, across the 45, down to the 42-yard line for a big game. Tim Kutras finally dragged him down, but a big game for New Mexico. 
Yeah, and you're beginning to see this Lobo offensive line impose their will on this Tennessee Tech defense. They're starting to wear them down a little bit. You also wonder, how does the altitude come into play yeah, here, right? Deal. I mean, that's another thing. These guys are coming in from sea level. How's that starting to affect these guys and, and their ability to play at a high level? 22 yards on the gain for Dorian Lewis. His first down at the 42 for the Lobos. Lewis stays in as the sole back behind Hopkins. Hopkins gives it to Lewis, sticks in his gut, runs off the right side, runs away from a few tackles, and is loose again. Kutris drags him down. After a gain of 11, he gets to the 21-yard line. First down, New Mexico. And all of you fans watching at home, I just want you to watch what's happening with the game within the game, right? The offensive line versus the defensive line. This UNM offensive line is really beginning to move the Tennessee Tech look defensive how deep they line are. They're four yards off the deep. ball. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so, again, just what we've been talking about, this offensive line is beginning to really impose their will and blow these guys off the football. Lobos rushing the football today have 192 yards rushing, 414 yards of offense for New Mexico. Been a long time, huh? Long Lu time. Lewis stays in. We'll see what happens next week when New Mexico State comes in. Hopkins wants to throw, looks deep, throws over the middle, has his man and just overthrew Luke Weissong, who had a couple of steps on the defender. Another shot for Dillon, and it'll be second down for New Mexico. Yeah, and that was one of those moments where Hopkins was actually a little bit late getting that ball out. Weissong was running down the seam of that field wide open, uh, and he just missed him, just missed him. So second down for the Lobos. 35-10 as we... Just above five minutes to go here in the first half. Hopkins 11 for 15, 211 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Dorian Lewis stays in as the running back. I think Bill's probably done for the night, don't you? I think so. 162 yards for Krosky Merritt. Dorian Lewis, big hole right side. Dorian Lewis down to the 16-yard line and another New Mexico first down. Dragged down there by Okachi Imanwari, the cornerback for the Golden Eagles, and another first down for the Lobos. You're right. You just look at the job the offensive line's doing. And that look, we're not gonna, we're not going to answer any questions today. Kind of like last week, you weren't going to ask answer long term questions about A and M. And we're not going to know long term questions tonight. Next week, you're going to start playing like opponents, and you're going to start getting an idea. The Lobos needed to impose their will on someone today. Hopkins looks left, throws left, and he has got a touchdown to D.J. Washington. Going to the big junior college transfer, 16 yards, and a New Mexico touchdown. D.J. Washington's first is a Lobo. Yeah, and that was just a beautiful throw, beautiful catch, and it was contested, right? Again, we've been talking about the play of the quarterback, the wide receiver, the corner. Can't get much better coverage than that, but D.J. Washington with that big frame and that big physical presence, he's just able to box out his defender and make a play on the ball. And Hopkins does a great job, again, of really squeezing that football in between the sideline and his receiver, ensuring that no one else can get that football. Washington, just his second catch, but his first touchdown is a Lobo. Luke Drizwicki comes on for the extra point for New Mexico. It is good as they all have been. Hey, looky here. Go celebrate. 420 on the clock. Time Third out on quarter. the field. Uh -oh. More about these and other opportunities from your local recruiter or at NationalGuard.com. Two minutes and 16 seconds for Dylan Hopkins to hit DJ Washington for the touchdown pass. It was the first touchdown of DJ Washington's Lobo career, 16 yards from Dylan Hopkins. Third touchdown of the night for Dylan Hopkins. He might be done. 12 of 16, 227 yards, three touchdowns and an interception for the transfer from the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and a pretty good night for him. Yeah, and outside of that pick that he threw, partner, I mean, he's you know been what? almost pick, flawless. And the pick was, a, look, and you, you said this, he did stare his receiver down. Terrific play by the cornerback on, Great the, play. on the play. Great play. I mean, I, I thought on that play, Jackson Price came up and made a terrific play. He just sometimes the guy makes a play. Ethan Roberts stays in at quarterback. Thornton in motion to the far side. They flip it to him. Covell's got some room, gets across the 30 to the 33. It's a gain of eight. It's a nice play by them. Covell Thornton has some speed. I expected them to use him more tonight. Didn't you expect I to agree. see a little bit more number yeah, six? Yeah, I mean, 
But again, I mean, they just seem to get out of their rhythm in the second quarter and have not really been able to regain any sort of momentum on the offensive side of the football. So I don't think they've been able to really execute their game plan to the level they thought they were. 243 yards of offense for Tennessee Tech. They had 100 in the first quarter. And since then, the Lobos have clamped down a little bit. And the motion penalty is going to back them up. You're starting to see a little bit of frustration on Tennessee Tech, too. Look, they've had a tough way to open the season uh, for them. And this is a team that was 4-7 and seven last year, and they struggled a little bit. They were 2-3 and three in the OVC, tied for third. They lost 36 straight to FBS teams. But they opened last week with uh, on the road at Furman, and it, a team that was ranked sixth in FCS, a really good team. Put it on them a little bit. They got beat last week by a score, 42-10. to 10. That's the score right now. They're probably tired of looking up and seeing that score. Tough way to start the season. They'll go home next week, and they'll, they'll get a home opener. There's a handoff right up the middle, and that's going to get them about three. Call it third down and three. They go home, and they get some home games now. North Alabama will come in next week. Then they get Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State's no joke now. You know, Kennesaw State's going up to uh, – FBS next year, they'll be in the uh, in the Conference USA, Kennesaw State will be. So, it doesn't get a whole lot easier, but at least they get to go home and get, get some home cooking. Indeed. Hope they got some green chili while they're here, though, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not lying. Those of you back back in Tennessee, I mean, the food out here is good now. And it's that time of year, man. Oh, I mean, you smell it doesn't it. get any better than that. Third down and four for the Golden Eagles. Roberts keeps and has some room, slides, and he'll get the first down. Coming in late, and is there a flag? There is a flag. Jamarius Lewis, number five, came in late after the slide. They may get him for a late hit. Yeah, and they also may get him for targeting. It did look like he launched. Let's see what we get. Almost mm. need a little. Yeah, we'll get a look here. This is the kind of t- the time of game, too. You wonder how, mu- how much longer. After the play. Personal foul, late hit with targeting, number 22, defense. That penalty is under further review. You got late hit? We're in a medical timeout. Okay. All right. I got you. I think it was five. I think the number is five here. and and that's Jamarius Lewis. Were they looking for a number? They said 22. So 22 would be Christian Ellis. Let me give you some scores from around the Mountain West Conference as they go over this. In San Diego right now, they're in the third quarter. UCLA is beating San Diego State by a score of 35-10. Air Force is in a battle. Look at Air Force and Sam Houston. Ooh. Sam Houston, if you're not aware, is a member of Conference USA. The same conference New Mexico State plays in now. 6 Three Air Force leads with 7 11 to go in the fourth quarter. They're in the red zone now down in Texas. Idaho State is in Logan. Utah State's beating the Bengals 65 21 after three. They're. After review, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. Number 22 is disqualified from the contest. So that's Christian Ellis, and that's going to hurt next week. Does he have to sit out half of next week, right? He, he will have to sit out the first half next week, and he was filling in for Tavian Combs yeah. at the Lobo spot, which they're already somewhat thin at. And so let's see who the, the UNM defense brings in to take that spot because they've got a true freshman, Derek Moore, uh, who they just don't feel like is ready to play yet. So let's see who they slide in there uh, in, in, in response. Lobo penalties, they, if you're looking for something that you really got to clamp down on and you want to go look at, film tomorrow take a look at penalties because penalties have, have been been miserable for well, actually for both teams today but it's been tough for new mexico so it's first down and 10 49 yard line roberts has two backs next to him he drops the football it's on the ground let's see who's got it it's new mexico and it's in the hands of gabe lopez they just fumbled the handoff and big gabe lopez the transfer from washington the state is a f- was the guy who jumped on it and new mexico's forced another turnover and the Lobos will have the football up 42-10. to 10. New quarterback, new running back. You're going to see errors like that occur, particularly at this point in the game. So another turnover forced by New Mexico. Let's see what they do offensively and who they run out there now. Oh, 
Hopkins will stay in at quarterback. Another series for the starter. The running back will be Sherrod White. First down, Lobos at the 49 yard at the 45 yard line. In motion, quick pitch. They give it to Davis. Ryan Davis is loose. Ryan Davis is going to score a touchdown. 49 yards for RD on the jet sweep. A one play drive and a touchdown, New Mexico. Is that Caden Pope? I saw 16. Am I looking at 18? I think it was 18. I think Caden you're Pope. right. I think you're right. I saw 16 all day. That's Caden Pope. Thanks, partner. Yeah. That's all wrong on me. Caden Pope on his first carry. First time we've Get seen him. Get another young man in there and give him the ball. Yeah, I saw 16 on the uniform coming around, and it was all about number 18, Caden Pope, the wide receiver, a freshman, a transfer from Mississippi State, where former Lobo Zach Arnett is the head coach. Indeed. Drizwicki will come on. My apologies to the Pope family and to Caden Pope. Yeah, I saw number 16 coming around all day. I'm going to go to the eye doctor this week. <laughs> make sure I got these things figured out by next week. Drizwicki kick is on the way, and it is good. It is 49 to 10, New Mexico. 2.13 to go. We're still in the third quarter. We'll be back to Albuquerque after this. Play the newest slots. Game shows with big pucks. We got that. Bars and bites, you can stay for the night. Come and get your kicks, come and get your kicks at Route 66. Woo! Route 66 is giving away scratchers every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in September. Earn 300 same day points and redeem from 1 to 7 p.m. You could win $100,000 in cash. Get your kicks only at Route 66 Casino Hotel. Hi, I'm Steve Sucker here for Dr. Robert Melendez and the Juliet Eye Institute. You may remember me like this, but no more. The glasses are gone. I tossed them months ago because of a brand new procedure from Dr. Melendez known as RLE, Refractive Lens Exchange. The latest technology, the best eyesight I've ever had in my life, and you can check it out by clicking on the link in the description right here. Hey, grab me one too. Delivering more. Call it a 46-yard touchdown run. First touch of the game, Caden Pope, the transfer from Mississippi State. Number 18, not number 16. 49-10, New Mexico. We got 213 to go in the third quarter. It'll be a fair catch. And out to the 25-yard line for Tennessee Tech. So they've hurt themselves, Tennessee Tech has. You, you had some, some fumbles. Bad snaps, a lot of penalties, um, and the Lobo defense has forced some turnovers. Yeah, they have, partner. And, I mean, once again, we continue to see the dramatic impact of the transfer portal on this UNM uh, offense. I mean, I just I can't get over it. A lot of the guys who have, been made, who have made plays tonight have come out of that transfer portal, and this looks like a completely different offensive unit now that they have some skill players on the outside who can really stretch the field and make some things happen with the football in their hands. Jordan Potts is the new quarterback who wears number five. Listed, actually, that's not even Jordan Potts. I saw the five, and it's a 15. So they're going to go four deep on their on their roster to quarterback, and the quarterback is now Maddox Ritchie. Ritchie comes in at quarterback, 6'2", a redshirt sophomore from Baldwin, Mississippi. Yeah. 
Maddox Ritchie, second down and eight. I, I think Coach Alexander now just let's get out of here, figure out what we got and, and, and who we can get out there a little bit and let's just stay healthy. Yeah, exactly, and give these guys some, some burn, right? I mean, what? allow these guys to get a little bit of experience. It's the only way you get it. That's right. And this young man's still running hard. Allen has is, is, is been terrific for them. They came in and played hard. And it, after the first quarter, it was 7-7, and New Mexico was erupted offensively and defensively. They've recovered a couple of fumbles, have the Lobos. Time of possession doesn't ever really tell a story to me because Tennessee Tech is dominating that, but the Lobos have had some quick hits on offense. Third down and four. Richie's the quarterback. JV and Allen still in the game for Tennessee Tech. Richie throws behind his intended receiver. He was looking for number two. That is Quinton Cross. They're going to have to kick it again. So we're at the point where I think, fair to say, I mean, I, nothing's ever definite, but it's kind of out of hand. And we'll see a lot of Lobo reserves in the, in the fourth quarter. Wysong is back to receive the kick, and he'll call a fair catch. He'll receive it at the 21, and that's where the Lobos will set up shop with 43 seconds to go. Aggies come in here next week, and there's a late flag on this. Now let's make sure things don't get silly. Could be some unsportsmanlike. Right. Now, now is where maybe you get your, you know, some of your guys you're going to need next week. You want to make sure that they're available next week. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a long call this football season, right? And so I think anytime you find yourself in a scenario like this where you can take some of your starters out of the game and get some of these younger guys some burn, that's a positive. And this UNM football team needs to get some of these young players a bit more experience and a bit more exposure to playing big time in college football. Now, D.C. Tapscott, the backup quarterback from Appalachian State, does have his helmet on. It looks like he's in that offensive huddle. So it looks like he's going to go in. Penalties on New Mexico. Correction. Number 24 on the kicking team. That's very $15 be added to the run. First down, New Mexico. So Dylan Hopkins' night, I believe, to be over. 13 to 17 for the Lobo quarterback. 273 yards, four touchdowns, and an interception. Pretty good night, huh? Really good night, and I think those numbers really reflect how efficient of a quarterback that he is, right? I mean, you look at his numbers overall, and of career starters right now, he's ranked in the top 15 in terms of quarterback efficiency, and that is not throwing a lot of interceptions and throwing a lot of touchdowns and not missing a lot of completions. D.C. Tabscott took some snaps last week. He's a transfer from Appalachian State. Takes his first snap tonight, gives it to Sherrod Wright, White. White gets through the right side before he is dragged down by Gaines. A gain of about four. It'll be second down and six. Twenty-three seconds to go. Let's see if the Lobos run another play in this quarter. Tabscott, a sophomore transfer, six-four. Came over from Appalachian State. He is from Franklin, Tennessee. A lot of Tennessee on this Lobo roster, isn't there? Hopkins from Marysville. Won a state championship there. Handoff is white. Pounds his way for a first down and then a little bit more. Flag comes in late. Tackle was made by number 18 for Tennessee Tech on Hell Garcia. I'm looking to see what the flag is going to be, which way they're moving. Garcia on the tackle. Cerritos Junior College, a California kid from Santa Fe Springs, California. Holding, number 66, offense. Ten yards from the previous spot, replay second down. Tito Stafford, the That's the end party. of the third quarter. Tito Stafford, one of the Alabama State transfers, guilty. will come back. It'll be Lobo Ball. That'll be second and long. And start the fourth quarter. We're through three here in Albuquerque. New Mexico leads Tennessee Tech 49 to 10. Here at Clark's Pets, we understand your pets. We take meticulous time to find out more about them. Dig deep into their world to understand their needs. We do research for knowledge of each pet. So you can trust Clark's Pets to provide you the best products and service for your pets because we work hard to understand all of their needs. Clark's Pet Emporium 
your pet's second best friend. We here at Clark's Pet Emporium welcome you to bring in your pets. We know that having your pet with you makes the experience of shopping for them even better. And we welcome you to bring your kids also. Clark's Pet Emporium, your pet's second best friend. We are dedicated to creating positive change across New Mexico and investing in community impact. In 2022, we gave $1.8 million in grants and sponsorships to help transform our communities. We are proud to partner with exceptional organizations that are doing incredible work. In 2022, the Nucinda Foundation awarded $630,000 in community rewards grants to 104 programs at 97 organizations. That's the power of we in action. As a not-for-profit, member-owned financial cooperative, we are dedicated to strengthening the financial well-being of our members and being their trusted financial resource. We actively look for ways to put money back in your pocket. Our earnings are passed on to members through higher savings rates, lower loan rates, and member rewards and dividends. This year, nearly 15,000 people became new members, bringing our total to 251,000 members across New Mexico. That's the power of we in action. 14 for New Mexico. The beautiful yellow flag with the red Z on it representing the land of enchantment. DC Tapscott is in at quarterback. Fakes the handoff and now he's going deep. Lofts it high up in the air and incomplete. Nice defense there by Okachi Imanwari on Caleb Medford. With him step for step, maybe not that nice because there's a flag down there at the 26 yard line. 15 yards, automatic, first down. Well, I said nice defense. Let's take a look at it. He is right there with him, a little bit behind. He did grab oh, him, didn't he? Pool. Sure he did. Sure he did. There's the pool to catch up. 15-yard penalty. He'll give the Lobos a first down at the 30, at the 47, 48-yard line. First down for the sophomore quarterback transferred from Appalachian State, D.C. Tabscott. See what he can do with this offense that has put up 497 yards in three quarters for New Mexico. Sherrod White's the running back with him. He gives it to White, who dances and gets greeted immediately as he gets through that hole. Who's at the bottom of that pile? Looks like big number 19, Aaron Swafford, who led them with tackles last year with, or last week with 12 at Furman. Swafford came up and filled that hole pretty nice. And I got to say, I really like the fact, going back to the previous play, that this UNM offense is still trying to take some shots down the field, right, and give, her, give everybody an opportunity to make some plays here. And it just shows a little bit about their aggressive nature of really putting this game out of reach. Yeah, I want to talk about that after this play. It's second down and nine for New Mexico with a 49-10 to 10 lead here in the third quarter. Certainly taking time and running the play clock down. It may take too much time here. They did. It's going to be a delay of game. So where's the line? Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. So where's the line? When you're up 49-10 and you're getting guys run that don't get run, as you say, getting them some burn, right? You got a backup quarterback. You want to see what he can do. Where's the line from getting my guy some reps to rubbing it in? It's a fine one. I'll yeah. tell you that much, partner. It's, 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 a, it's a fine line, right? But, uh, you know, you got to play every snap. we still got a quarter of football. And so if you're asking a team to put their foot, take their foot off the pedal, uh, you know, that, that's a difficult ask. And so, again, I like the aggressive nature. Now, if we're talking three minutes left in the football game yeah, and it's enough. tick, tick, tick. Yeah, we got a quarter to play. Yeah, we, we okay, still so got that's 15 where the line minutes is, right? Yeah. So the lines, we still got a quarter to play. We got to let's play football, boys. Right. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Devin right. Squires on the tackle for the Eagles. After a three-yard gain by White, so it'll be third down and 12. 
friend of Mexico. No, that that, that seems about right. Yeah. I mean, we got a quarter. We're, should we not play? We got you want your guys to get run, and I think yeah. everybody understands that, right? You, you, your guys are out playing hard. Their guys are playing hard, and I think that's where the line probably is. Well, and from the Tennessee Tech side, right? You want to see your guys finish the game, right? You don't want to see them give in. Tab Scott throws over the middle, incomplete. He was looking for Y Song. No, it's a pick. It was we got a picked. pick. The we ball pick. is picked, and they're going the other way. Finally tackled there by one of the linemen, C.J. James, but that was picked off. I, Omachi Imanuori with the t- with the pick. Yeah, it was, the, it was ball. deflected. Yep, yep, yep. Intercepted by Imanuori, so Tab Scott's first interception. Take a look at it again. The pass off. Two sets of hands, and there's Eamon Worry playing center field and was able to take it and go. Personal foul, blindside block, number 15 of the defense. 15 yards for the spot of the foul. First down, Tennessee Tech. All right, so the penalty is on Devin Squires on the return. So possession will remain Tennessee Tech. Yeah, I flat out missed that. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and just kind of rewinding that play, right? Everything about that was was wrong. I mean, there was pressure in uh, Tap Scott's uh, face. He was falling backwards, right? And he throws that ball into triple coverage. And what do you expect to happen? And so that is one of these scenarios where you want someone like that to get some burn at this stage of the game. And it really shows his inexperience, right? But he's going to learn from that one. He's going to lick those wounds and get back out on the field. Maddox Ritchie stays in at quarterback. JV and Allen still in at running back for Tennessee Tech. Ritchie. Looks left, and they roll the pocket to the right side. He throws it down the right side, and the receiver fell down. That was Quentin Cross who he was looking for, and he overthrew him. I'm trying to look down on the sideline and see where, where D.C. Tapscott is and who, which coach is talking to him. Because to your point, probably threw into double coverage anyway, right? He did. He did, and, and that's one of those where you just want to throw that ball away, right? So no one can get that football, but you can't throw it over the middle of the field. That is, you know, uh, generally what happens in a scenario like that. It gets picked off. Second down and 10 for the Golden Eagles. Low snap. Richie's got it pressured and throws it over the middle. It is complete. A short gain to number Nine, that is Brad Clark, who's been their number one receiver. A gain of about four, and it'll be second down at six. And I know in our meetings this week, the coaches talked a bit about Dimitri Johnson, but I've seen him make some big-time plays today, and he may not necessarily show up all over the stat sheet, but he is continuing to put pressure on this quarterback. When he has the opportunity to make a play, he's making the play, but he plays very physical. He's constantly coming down heel, great speed off the edge, and on that, that, that attempt there, he got a nice hit on the quarterback. Third down and six. They need the 30, does Tennessee Tech. Richie with an empty backfield. Throws, caught. Clark again, first down, and a little bit more down to the 18-yard line. First down for Tennessee Tech. Good throw by the young man, Maddox Ritchie to Clark. Let's look down on the New Mexico sideline. I see number 13, Devin Dampier, the true freshman quarterback from Arizona, taking some throws and getting his arm warm, and then a bunch of guys walking up to him. We may see Devin Dampier for the first time on and, the next series. And that could be interesting. I was watching that young man. Timeout, New Mexico. The first time out of the half, 30-second timeout. Dampier, one of two f- true freshmen who have been really impressive in Lobo camp. The other one is Aiden Armenta, the young man from La Cueva High School here in Albuquerque. But Devin Dampier was a young man that they got from Saguaro High School in, in Arizona, Phoenix area, who they're very, very high on yeah. and won the number three job this year as a true freshman. And, and the rules are, you can play in four games and still maintain your red shirt. So you Correct. don't burn your year of eligibility. Where Correct. back when you play, you get on the field for one play. And That's you, bur- it. you burn your whole year. That's and, it. and it's so much more just the way it is now. It is. It is. And I, like I was saying, man, I watched him play or I was watching him out at warm-ups and the way the ball just comes off of his hand, the arm strength and then also the speed. So it's going to be interesting to see if they use him in the running game as well and mix it up that way. First down and 10, two backs now for Richie, the quarterback. He's the third one that they've used today. Keeps it and rolls. Now he's being pressured. He's got to run away from the pressure. Throws it over the head of Pagese and throws it away. Nice job by Maddox Rishi just to get away from Hunter Rapola, who was chasing him down from behind. Threw it away over the head of Pagese, and he lives to see another day. 
Total offense tonight, 269 yards for Tennessee Tech. Lobos with 1127 to go here in the fourth quarter. I put up 500 yards of offense, 273 passing, 227 running. If you're just joining us, Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt, 12 carries, 162 yards, and three touchdowns for the senior transfer running back from Alabama State for New Mexico. Richie slings it to the right side and short of his intended receiver, Metrius Fleming, short and behind, and it'll be third down and 10. And UNM is still playing very physical style of defense. They're still bringing the guys on the outside. They're still bringing blitzes, still playing man coverage in the back zone as well. So third down and 10. They got to get to the 10. 49 to 10 is the number. New Mexico on top of Tennessee Tech. Sorry. Richie with Pegues with him. Puts Cross in motion from left to right, looks at Cross, now throws over the middle and complete. That is caught again by Metrius Fleming, but short of the first down. They needed 10. They got six. I don't see a field goal unit coming on, and why would I in a 49-10 game? It'll be fourth down and four. And Dwayne Alexander, the head coach at his alma mater, Tennessee Tech, says let's go for it, boys. Let's put some points on the board. And part of the last couple of plays, I've just been watching Dante Martin. And once again, I mean, Richie's just not even looking that way. Not even looking that way. His best receivers are out there, but they're just not even attempting to throw Dante Martin's way. Fourth down and four for Tennessee Tech. Richie, here comes pressure, and he is dropped. Sacked on fourth down. It'll be a turnover on downs. That is Dorian Lewis coming in from the corner. No, it is not. That is Mahalis Santorinos. Santorinos on the sack. Mahalis Time Santorinos. Out on the field. Santorinos on the sack. And a turnover on downs by New Mexico's defense. That was, that was a pride play right there. They were bringing pressure. That was a pride stop, right, for this defense. You've been in games like this, right? Big time. The defense out there, it's like, do not relent. Finish it. Santorinos comes off. The linebacker who's a junior college transfer from Sierra College comes on for the sack and a big play for New Mexico's defense. We'll be back 49-10 New Mexico. Dampier, the true freshman quarterback from Arizona, almost took his first snap as a Lobo. <laughs> <laughs> There's a flag on the play. Practice snap, ball start, number 66 offense. Five-yard penalty remain, first down. Tito Stafford, one of the transfers from Alabama State, guilty on that. So a run for the true freshman. You've got one of the guys going into camp, Andrew Henry, number two, who was really highly touted. The transfer running back from Louisiana Monroe is going to get some run as well. 
as the Lobos try to get everybody a little piece. There's Dampier with a juke, and he's got some room around the left side, and his first snap is a run that he will go out and gain a yard or two. Nah, give him five. Five yards on the first rush for the true freshman. Yeah, and he's got some nice speed now. I mean, nice read, a little juke off the edge there, and then he just puts his foot in the ground and heads upfield. Second down and 10 for New Mexico. 10 minutes, 10 seconds to go. 49 to 10 is the score. Lobos with a big second quarter to open it up and then a big third quarter to put it away. Dampier gives it to Henry. Cuts to the left side. Flag is down. Henry is loose. Down the left side. It cuts back at the 40. Pushed out at the 46. Now let's see what the flag is laying at the 29-yard line. Looks Boy, like he looked nice, too, on that, yeah, too. Yeah, Henry's got some moves on him. All of these running backs, I mean, we've been reading about that all offseason, about this Lobo running back room and just how talented they are. And I think tonight we are really getting to see Personal a good example foul, of that. Face mask, number 94, defense. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. That's Ethan McLaurin, the guilty party, in two seasons at ULM, Louisiana Monroe. Henry played in 23 games, 843 yards and eight touchdowns. Long run was 75 yards. He led the Warhawks in rushing in 2021. Now he's a pretty good one. Also went to JUCO, Fort Scott Community College. So he's been around. But this was the one when, when the Lobos got him. This was the one the coaches were really excited about. And then Bill came on during camp, and you're like, wow, you got a stable. Dampier keeps it around the right side. Cuts to the outside. Gets out of one tackle and finally is down. Tackle is going to go to Antonio Hunt, who, if you kind of recall that name, Antonio Hunt. Yep, he played at UNM. Yep. Former Lobo from 2019 to 2022. He was here, played 24 games with the Lobos. Now he's playing for Tennessee Tech. And if you can see here, it, it's, a, it's a bit different dynamic with someone like Dampier in the game. We've seen zone read twice already with him uh, at quarterback and him keeping it. We haven't really seen that with the other two quarterbacks tonight. So he gives you a different, uh, different perspective and a bit different angle uh, to run this offense through. Dampier throws for the first time. It is complete on the outside down to the 20-yard line, complete to tight end Everett Hunter, first catch by Everett Hunter on the day. And another first down, first completion as a Lobo for Devin Dampier. And the true, fa true freshman is manufacturing a drive here, although it was, it was uh, aided by that penalty. He's putting together some nice plays. First down for the Lobos. They're at the 19-yard line. It's 49-10, to 10, taken down to 8.15 to go here. Fourth quarter. Aggies in next week. Dampier pitches to Henry. Left side, catches the edge. There goes Henry, and it is a touchdown, New Mexico. Andrew Henry, 19 yards around the left side, and the Lobos are north of 50. It is 55 to 10. And we've got a little laundry on the field here, not too sure. Holding, number one four, offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. And the Lobos Correction. Are, Second down. And the Lobos are not north of 50. A holding on, would they say 14? Deuce Jones, is that who they called? 1-4? I heard number one, but I'm not sure. We don't I, have I a number one on the I thought he said 1-4 is ah, what I heard. There it is. And if that's the case, it's Deuce Jones. So that erases the 19-yard run by Andrew Henry. Who, I mean, looked like he was coasting, right? It looked like he had three extra gears, didn't it? I mean, he's got, he's got some speed. And, again, man, we're just seeing the talent that this University of New Mexico football team really has at all of the different skill positions across this roster. So Henry stays in. It's first down and seven. Gampier keeps it, throws, caught, and it is complete to Hunter again. Everett Hunter down to about the 14. You know, I don't, I don't want to um, – it, it, it's, it's one game against an FCS opponent, an FCS opponent that's struggling. And so, I, like I said, you and I will be together next week. And right. I'm looking forward to, to that atmosphere next week. And I think next week is when you really start to get a feel about this offense. But they needed this. They, they flat out – this is one of our things we talked about in the pregame. All the work you do, getting yelled at, sweating, hitting, working – 
getting up in the morning, lifting all summer. You, they needed something to validate all the work. They did, and they've executed at a really high level tonight on both the offensive and the defensive side of the ball. They've really limited the mistakes, the assignment errors, and all those things that really sidetrack a team, and they've been able to, 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 to stay focused and execute on the things that they needed to tonight. Andrew Henry took it around the right side. Nice play by Gerald Kilgore to drop him for a loss. Back to the 18-yard line, and it'll be third down and about eight for New Mexico. Kilgore didn't give up. I like the Tennessee Tech still playing hard, too. I really I do, too. Do. I agree, man. I agree. Is this four-down territory? I mean, is there any reason to kick a field goal? You're going I, – I, I don't know what, what the right thing to do would be on fourth down. I think you kick a field goal, right? I mean, you're, you're also still trying to get your special teams unit some, some, some extra burn here, kick a field goal in game opportunity in a game moment. Um, so I, I like kicking the field goal. You don't goal. have to they worry about it here. To. First down, Sherrod White leaps over dudes to the five yard line. You got a first down, you don't have to make the decision. Good run by Sherrod. He's had a nice day too, as have most of the Lobos. Sherrod White, fifth carry. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting, Jeff, to see how they use these running backs moving forward, right? I mean, most of the night we've only seen uh, one running back in the game at a time, but it will be interesting to see just because of how uh, dynamic some of these guys are if they start mixing it up and we start getting some different personnel groupings to get additional playmakers on the field. Well, you get a lot of tape. You get to see guys in, in game action and, and better idea what they are. Sherrod White took it up the middle, but there was a false start before we go, so that play never, ever happened. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start, number zero, offense. Five yards from the previous spot, remain first down. DJ Washington, the receiver, he had a touchdown tonight. So back it up to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal from the 10. Clock is running, 540 and moving. Should be a good feel in the Lobo locker room. i got to believe Danny Gonzalez will be, feel satisfied. A slow start, but... After a 7-7 first quarter, Lobos have dominated the rest of the way. They put up 572 yards of offense tonight. Devin Dampier is the quarterback. He gives it to Sherrod White. White dances around and gets met in the hole and pushed back after a gain of about two yards. On Hell Garcia was the first guy to meet him, the linebacker from California. It'll be second down and goal from the nine. Yeah, and Tennessee Tech is not quitting, right? They're, they're trying to do everything that they can in their power to ensure that UNM doesn't score this final touchdown here. There's it's a, a pride, pride thing for them, too. There's, yeah, exactly. Uh, there, there's a pride thing for them as well, right? Um, and so, you know, these boys are still out here fighting and playing really hard, and I appreciate that about them. I, I, I can't agree more. They might be out, man. They might be beaten tonight, but I, they are still playing hard. Medford wide to the right. Dampier gives it to Sherrod White, who dances down to about the six-yard line. He is dropped there by number 30 for Tennessee Tech. That's third in games. Sophomore from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. That's where Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders play. Four minutes, 12 seconds to go. Third down and goal. See what the Lobos want to do here. Henry's back in the game. Andrew Henry, who appeared to have scored a touchdown, 19-yard run that was called back on a hole. Dampier's the quarterback. They give it to Henry. Nope, Dampier keeps it. Dampier scores a touchdown for New Mexico. Devin Dampier, the freshman on his first series as a collegiate football player. The true freshman leads a drive. Caps it off with a seven-yard touchdown. And now, I believe there's no laundry on the field. The Lobos are north of 50. <laughs> there you go, partner. And, I mean, I got to say, I really appreciate what Coach, Coach Vincent was doing there, putting Dampier in just positions where he didn't have to do too much, right? But he was able to show us his ability, whether it was running the football, throwing that thing out to the tight ends a bit on the bootleg. But I'll tell you what, this young man is going to give some people some problems in the future. He's going to be a big-time football player. Luke Drizwicki adds the extra point. Lobos have scored. How many touchdowns goes into 56? Is that eight? Eight times seven is 56? I think that's the number. That's the number eight we're looking for at. Eight Luke Drizwicki tonight. Eight Lobo touchdowns, and it is 55 to 10. 
We'll be back. There's a three minutes and 49 seconds to go. We'll come. UMM Health, delivering more. Here at Clark's Pets, we understand your pets. We take meticulous time to find out more about them. Dig deep into their world to understand their needs. We do research for knowledge of each pet. So you can trust Clark's Pets to provide you the best products and service for your pets. Because we work hard to understand all of their needs. Clark's Pet Emporium, your pet's second best friend. Well, they made a trip out to watch the Golden Eagles play. Um, got some good weather and some good food. 56-10 is the score. Tennessee Tech is getting beat by New Mexico. Lobos turned it on, really, uh, in the second quarter and third quarter. George, Lobos scored 21 points in the third quarter. They scored 19 points in the third quarter all last year, like like in all 12 games combined yeah. last year. Um, and, and, again, I don't, I don't want to get too excited about – what happened last week or this week if you're a Lobo fan. 582 yards of offense for New Mexico. I, I think we all kind of went into this, and I don't know if you expected this, if you didn't, and if you're you know, a Tennessee Tech fan, you certainly didn't. Lobos played at Texas A&M last week. I don't know what you expected last week. But I think we kind of figured, okay, we're going to find out a lot about this team in week three and four against yeah. New Mexico State and UMass, right? Changed quarterbacks did Tennessee Tech. Hayes Gibson is in. He played one play earlier and fumbled the football. They'll run off the left side and get about a yard. So what do you know about Lobos? They look good offensively today. They look okay last week, right? How do you, how do you put this in perspective and not overreact? Well, you know, it's tough to say, right? I mean, I think we're still trying to figure out what this football team is, and I think this football team is also still trying to figure out what they are. And, you know, what I really like to see in this football game was just the way they progressed throughout the football game, right? I mean, again, trying to just feel each other out in the first quarter. It was a very tight first quarter. Second quarter, they really started to settle in. Third quarter, they really executed at a high level. And nice. then now in the fourth quarter, they're finishing the football game, yeah. right? Yeah. And so – they, in my eyes, this is probably one of the most complete football games no, this team right. has yeah. played in a really long time. Yeah, yeah and, and, and granted against an FCS opponent that's struggling, and you understand that, but I think you're right. They look different, right? They and, do. And, again, I, I'm not getting, I don't think any Lobo fan is going to get super, you know, over the top, but you got to feel good. you right. got to feel good. The offensive line dominated. They should have. Yep. Right? You ran the ball. You should have. Your quarterback looked good, and, and – this was a good performance for Tennessee Tech. They'll go home and they'll they'll get their home opener as Gibson dives at two yards short of the first down. It'll be fourth down for Tennessee Tech as we click under three minutes with 250 to go. They're going to go home and they'll have their home opener against North Alabama and and get back and, and they'll get healthy. For the Lobos, here come the Aggies. Yeah. And New Mexico State got beat by Liberty today. They're one and two. New Mexico State beat you down at their place last week or yep. last year. Yep. Um, you played in those games now. Um, this here, here here starts the week of the rivalry of enchantment. I mean, you know, Jeff, I'm I'm from New Mexico, man. Playing in that rivalry meant a ton to me. Uh, I just so happened to always play my best football against those guys, and regardless of what the records are, 
Um, there is no love lost. No love lost between those two groups. We'll talk a little about next week when we get back. Lobos will have the ball with 2.23 to go, leading Tennessee Tech 56-10. to 10. We here at Clark's Pet Emporium welcome you to bring in your pets. We know that having your pet with you makes the experience of shopping for them even better. And we welcome you to bring your kids also. Clark's Pet Emporium, your pet's second best friend. We would like to thank the following sponsors for making this broadcast possible. For over 20 years, Evergard Roofing and Solar has been committed to customer service. Locally owned and operated, Evergard offers both commercial and residential roofing and solar services. For more info, please call 505-821-9543. Evergard Roofing and Solar are proud supporters of ProView Sports Network and New Mexico Youth Athletics. Back here in Albuquerque for the final 223. New Mexico is on top of Tennessee Tech, 56-10. Jeff Sambietta, George Carter, glad you were with us tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you. We get the call tomorrow or tomorrow, next week. It's Justin Holiday is the quarterback for New Mexico. It'll be the Lobos and the Aggies next week. The handoff went on the inside give. First carry as a Lobo for Zach B. Hill, the young freshman uh, – they're the sophomore out of Rio Rancho High School, so they're going uh, local with Zach B. Hill. Big one next week. You played in it. You're from New Mexico. You get it. Everybody's going to talk all week about them and you and what, what happened and what happened last year and what didn't happen last year, and everybody gets to run it until next Saturday night, huh? That's it, man. And, I mean, you talk about a much improved New Mexico State football team who also went into the transfer portal this year. Uh, they're going to be an entirely different team that's going to come out onto the field next Saturday night. And so, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be a battle, man. It's going to be an absolute battle, and I'm excited for it. Another yard for V. Hill. It'll be third down and seven. Lobos have got to get to the 43. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the 43. Holiday, who started games for the Lobos last year, is the number four quarterback on the depth chart as the Lobos brought in other quarterbacks ahead of him, a Hopkins and Tab Scott and Dampier. Good to see Justin get some run. He's put in a lot of time here at the University of New Mexico. Ticking under a minute to go. V. Hill cuts back into the pile, puts his head down, and is stopped there by Jaquez McGowan, who's still playing. All right, so overall impressions. Next week, what happens? We get, think, we get a good one, huh? I think we're gonna have. A, I think we're gonna have a close football game. Uh, you know, regardless of the teams. Records, talent levels, that is generally always a very tight football game because there's so much that goes into it. And so I think we're going to see a heck of a football game in between these two teams and, you know, really going to see different football teams than what we saw last year. And so uh, Coach Kill has got those guys in New Mexico State playing. Although I know they lost the game today, but he's going to have them up and ready to play next week, no 30, doubt. Yeah, 38-17 or 33-17 was the score in Lynchburg today. Liberty beat New Mexico State. Um, Aggies did not score a point in the second quarter. I, I'm sorry, in the second half as this mm. one ticks down. Aggies er, we will have one more snap. Aggies got shut out in the second half in Lynchburg today. So it'll be interesting. Diego Pavia, the young man who's their quarterback, played at Volcano Vista High right. School. I talked to him earlier a few weeks ago, and he was already looking ahead. This is obviously a big, big, and he is a gamer. You're going to get a tough, gritty young man. They've yep. got a lot of transfers. They've yep. got some talent both defensively and at playmaker position. So I, and, and the Lobos are going to come in feeling really good about themselves after putting up 56 today. They are. They are. And uh, we will see, partner. We will see. i got to believe the Lobos will have the reigning Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Week, Ja'Cory Krosky-Merritt. I've been looking around the league a little bit. Not a great day for the league, but um, 
UCLA beat San Diego State. Air Force put up 13. They won at Sam Houston. One last play, or maybe two. Lobos are going to punt. We haven't seen a whole lot of Aaron Rodriguez today, have we? We have not. Fair catch is called for and made with seven seconds to go. Ja'Cory Krosky Merrick, you're going to hear so much about this young man. All of a sudden, everybody's going to know him. Yeah. Bill, as they call him. Bill. Best, like one of the best nicknames ever, right? Just Bill. You got Dr. J. I always thought the best nickname was the great one. Right? There's always right Wayne Gretzky, the great one. Bill. And um, you're going to hear a lot about Bill. He carried the ball 12 times today for 162 yards and three touchdowns. Had a 55-yard touchdown. He had a 48-yard touchdown. He, he was flat out terrific. Um, and, and he'll be nominated for player of the week. Lobo defense gave up total yards today. 276 while the offense put up 587 we'll get another play in here and put this thing to bed they hand it off up the middle and that should do it Torin Baker with a short carry Danny Gonzalez will cross the field as a winner go shake hands with Dwayne Alexander Danny wins his home opener as he has every time as New Mexico head coach here at his alma mater two guys coaching their alma mater which you don't see all that much, a whole lot you of don't. pride. Um, but they, they go out there, and Danny has now got his eighth victory as head coach. All right, let me give you a couple numbers, and we'll wrap this thing up. Total yards for New Mexico, 587, 280 for the Golden Eagles. Penalties were a big deal. 11 penalties on New Mexico for 95 yards. That's something they got to clean up. 12 penalties up. for 100 yards on the Golden Eagles. And, and um, your leaders, Dylan Hopkins, threw for 273 yards. He was 13 of 17, four touchdowns and an interception. Devin Dampier, the true freshman, got a run. He led a drive, two for two passing, and he scored a rushing touchdown. He was three of 14 and had the touchdown. Leading receiver for New Mexico was Luke Wysong, four catches, 53 yards and a touchdown. DJ Washington scored a touchdown. And I guess the, the touchdown that Pope scored was also considered a passing touchdown because it was a shovel pass ah. so you had four rushing touchdowns and four receiving touchdowns because deuce jones had one as well all right so your impressions george as we as we go into it a big win a convincing win um a, a much needed win a validating win but yet a win that you need to put into perspective and not lose your mind about yeah, and I think offensively, man, I mean, there's some, some massive takeaways, right? Just the big play potential that this UNM offense brings to the table, I think, is second to none uh, that we've seen in recent years. And then defensively, I think this group is still learning. They're still gelling. They haven't played a lot of football together, but tonight was a really nice performance. They started off a little shaky, but really finished the game strong. Excited to see what these guys will do next week against New Mexico State. Turnovers, they forced two turnovers. That's a big deal for you, right? Big time. I mean – you got to give your offense extra possessions, and the offense was able to take advantage of that, right? And so tonight we probably saw some of the most complimentary, complimentary football from this UNM program in a very long time. Next week it's the Aggies. We get to do it again. I thoroughly enjoy working with you, partner. You Same. are a pro. You are tremendous, and uh, I'm honored to be working with you. George Carter, we get to do it again next week. Great yes, job sir. today. Same to you, my friend. I want to say thank you to our tremendous ProView Networks crew who put this on the Mountain West Network today. Our producers, Jason Pohl. Replay was Aaron Rivera. Graphics, Andres Trujillo. And our camera operators, Jude Apodaca, Justin V. Hill, Adrian Hernandez, Gabe Morris, and Laquina Chenault. Thank you. You guys did a terrific job, as you always do. Final score for the final time here in Albuquerque. New Mexico beats Tennessee Tech 56-10. We'll be back here on the Mountain West Network with you next week. 6.02 kickoff. Lobos and the Aggies. New Mexico and New Mexico State in the rivalry of enchantment. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. For my broadcast partner, George Carter, my name is Jeff Sambietta. Be good to each other, please. Be kind, loving, caring, and sharing.